this number three? I am searching it, Lieutenant. This Mr. M is making it harder to get a slab in the morgue than it is to get a room in a hotel. The papers are calling him mysterious, Mr. M, now. Yes, by way of letting us know that it's our job to take the mystery out of him. Three small-time crooks who haven't double-crossed anyone found on the river, one after the other. Why? M stands for maniac, I'd say. Judging by the coroner's report. Hold him back on me, eh? These are facts we're not giving to the newspapers for a while, Kirby. Those three men weren't drowned. They were all killed and thrown in the drink afterwards. Brains paralyzed. More paralysis in the first than in the second. Least of all in the third. Caused by some chemical, the traces of which our chemists can't identify. Mystery chemical plus mysterious Mr. M equals what? Well, that's what we've got to find out. How's it going? Now that our experiments have shown us how to use this mixture properly, we're all set. And with the police looking for the mysterious Mr. M? And landing that name to send him on a wild goose chase is a swell idea, Mr. Walden. One of my cleverest. It also covers our experiments. While uh, the police are looking for the make-believe M, we'll be busy with the man we want. When shall Dr. Kittredge disappear? Get him here as soon as you can, Derek. Check that with the bunker squad. It may be a lead. I said Kittredge. You say he bought a ticket to Washington, but nobody saw anyone like him in the station? Yeah, this is Blair. Dan Blair, chief of homicide. Kirby Walsh, report. Go ahead. No, missing persons isn't handling the Kittredge disappearance. We are at the request of Washington. All right, I'll call you back. No, no, Dr. Kittredge. You're quite right, Dr. Kittredge. I am Mr. M. And I want your submarine engine. You're not the only one. Probably not. But I'm going to show you why you can't help giving it to me. I'm the man who guides you, who controls you. Do you understand, Archer? I understand, Mr. M. When you regain consciousness, you remember nothing of what has happened between the time you were given hypnotrine and now. But when that clock strikes four, you will do exactly as you have been instructed. Exactly. That's another point, Dr. Kittredge. Under the influence of hypnotrine, no one ever lies. How do you understand, Dr. Kittredge? One injection of hypnotrine and you'll tell us what we want to know, or do as we say. That is, unless the police catch up with you first, because I was expected in Washington this morning. If anything happens to Kittredge, we stand to lose one of the greatest inventions of all times. Are you sure he's got what he claims? Why not? He's one of the country's foremost scientists. Yes, I know. But this submarine engine he's invented, Sounds fantastic. All I know is what he's written me. But if it will run underwater without batteries... Submarines could ride out any storm. The ocean's always calm at 50 feet deep. But he says he's got an engine that will develop 30 knots. 30? They could build submarines as large as ocean liners. The fact that Dr. Kittredge has disappeared proves, in my opinion, that his invention is practical. Yes, gentlemen. What is it you wish to know about my new submarine engine? Is it merely plans on paper, or are you actually building it? It is being built at various plants by a variety of factories, secretly. That means those plants don't know what it is they're working on. Where will it be assembled? At my own shop. The original master plan is there, too, incidentally, in the safe. Where is the shop? Uh, uh, uh. It's not a hypnotry reaction. 
That's his heart. I'll fix it. In the shop. Where is it? Pre... Precision... Tool works. It's too late. You should have checked his heart. Don't put an M tag on him. Drop him in some street and let the police think he died of a heart attack. We'll pick up Brock and investigate the precision tool works. This is the only thing I found on the desk that might help us. Your specifications for the mechanical control device have been received. You will hear from me in due course. Signed, James Farrell, Nord Manufacturing Company. Keep it. How about you, Brock? Well, I don't have to blow this job. I can figure its combination. Good. Derek and I'll be waiting in the car. Just the blueprints for the submarine. That's all you want, huh? Yeah, that's all. Brock wasn't going to blow that safe. The whole building's on fire. Probably a fix so nobody could open up a Kittredge. Lucky we have that lead to the Nord Company. Kirby, the guy we're looking for, just came in. What do you know about the... Grant! So you're out of the service at last. Yes, but I didn't know the police were after me. Well, the name fooled Rogan. It's Jim we're trying to locate. He hasn't been seen for a week. Oh, well, he's off and away on business longer than that. I know, but that isn't the case this time. The Nord Company asked us to locate him. Through the Homicide Squad instead of the Bureau of Missing Persons? What's up, Kirby? Do you know anything about our local sensation? The mysterious Mr. M? Yes, that's why I'm in town. But I didn't expect Jim to be mixed up in the affair. Well, he may not be. But we're not taking any chances. Sleeping like a baby. Carl doesn't know he told you anything. No, he doesn't. When he comes out of it, he won't remember anything we don't want him to. So we can figure on the basis of the strange chemical that M was responsible for Kittredge's death. And we know the motive. No wonder Washington is interested, and Mr. M, too. We had no idea that Kittredge had such an invention. Yeah? Miss Clinton's here to see you, Captain. Have her come in. Oh, I can come back later, Captain Blair. Nonsense. Come in. You're always welcome, Shirley. Miss Clinton, Grand Farrell, Jim's brother. How do you do? Oh, we're all so terribly worried about Jim. Yes, yeah, so am I, Miss Clinton. Shirley's an insurance investigator. She's been a lot of help to us on various occasions. Thanks, Kirby. I ran across a policy covering the precision tool works. It's made out to a Mr. Goodhue, but Dr. Kittredge is one of the beneficiaries. Well, I hate to say this, Grant, but that ties your brother in with them. How? The Nord people told us that Jim was working on some sort of a special gadget for the precision tool company. There's also an extraordinary clause in the policy. If the plant should be destroyed owing to an explosion of the safe, the company isn't liable. Then Goodhue's real name should turn out to be Kittredge. I'd say that was his way of protecting the master plan we want. Jim's probably involved, all right. What in the world are you talking about? You'll learn about that later. Right now, we'd like to know who the other beneficiaries are on that insurance policy. There's only one, Cornelia Waldron. Do you know anything about her? She's a local celebrity. And an extremely nice, wealthy old lady. She's a recluse now, but she used to be a society leader. Do you know her personally? Yes, but I haven't seen her for some time. Can you get me an appointment with her for tonight? Well, I can try. Mrs. Waldron, this is Grant Farrell. It's a pleasure, Mrs. Waldron. Thank you. Marina, meet Mr. Farrell. This is Miss Lamont and her brother, Derek. How do you do? How do you do? Well, why don't we all sit down? Thank you. Even though Marina and Derek aren't relatives, I like to think of them as my own. 
They've been such a comfort to me. Mrs. Walden, we're here because you are co-beneficiary with Dr. Kittredge on a policy for the Precision Tool Works. Am I indeed? It's the first I've heard of it, I assure you. Didn't Dr. Kittredge confide in you? Dr. Kittredge was a man who confided in no one. Did he ever mention anyone who might have been associated with him in business? Not that I can remember. Even though he felt grateful to me for financing his education, I... Did he ever say anything to you, Derek? No, not a word. Oh, what is it, Jerome? A telegram from Mrs. Walton. Shall I open it, Grandma? Why, dear? I'm not an invalid. What is it, Grant? From Mr. M. A threat against Mrs. Waldron, but this telegram didn't come from a regular office. Homicide Bureau, please. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. Special emergency at number one, Waldron Terrace. Report to Kirby Walsh. Kirby Walsh, number one, Waldron Terrace. We've thrown a cordon around the estate. Grant, nobody get near the place. Pull those drapes. I'll help. What's this? It's Grandma's bedtime snack. Jerome always serves it every night at 9 o'clock. No one's to eat any of this food. It'll be sent to the police chemist to be analyzed. Wait a minute. Is there an extension? In the hall. Martin, watch the hallways. Hello? This is the mysterious Mr. M. Tell Mrs. Waldron, will you please, that all the police of the city couldn't prevent her death when the clock chimes nine. Mrs. Waldron, all right? She wasn't here. Just a fainting spell. Take me to my room, my dear. Is it safe now, Mr. Farrell? Well, yes, for tonight at least. Thank you. Emergency autopsy on the Waldron's butler proved that your hunch was right, Grant. Traces of the same strange chemical were found in the body that were found in Kittredge and in those other three. Yes, and now we know what it's used for. You do, I don't. Jerome was a trusted servant, and yet he tried to kill Mrs. Waldron when she was heavily guarded and at a particular time. You mean the effect of the chemical is hypnotic? Yes. And what if Mr. M has Jim and is using that chemical on him to make him tell what he knows about Kittredge? Signal for you. Oh, watch this, aren't you? Everything worked out all right. Police should be more than ever convinced now that there is such a person as them. What did you want me for? Marine and I thought we should have a conference. How is my grandmother? You'd never know she's under the influence of hypnotrine. But if she ever comes out of it, Anthony... She'll never forgive us. Especially the weeks I held her prisoner while you and Derek perfected the stuff. She's on a diet of hypnotrine, then, as long as she lives. What did you two want me for? About Grant Farrell being on the case. He has a personal motive for solving it, and besides, he's an ace investigator. Why worry about that? Jim Farrell's under the influence of hypnotrine. Why not let him remove Grant Farrell for us, along with himself? Come on, Derek, we'll go down and take care of that right away. Who we'll put this in here? What is it? A record. Look at this note attached. 
This record contains a message of vital importance for Anthony Waldron. Anthony Waldron. Except you two and Archer, who knows I'm alive? All right, come on, play it. got us where he wants us. Frankly, I'm frightened. Well, I'm not. What can you do unless whoever it is shows himself? Obey him until we get the kid with engine. Then he'll show himself. And we've got hypnotrine. Cure him for 12 o'clock. What about contacting Grant Farrell? We conditioned Jim to take care of that for us, too. So that's all there was to my disappearance, Grant. I was worn out, I needed to get away, and I did. I went up to Silver Lake Lodge. You didn't meet anyone named Kittredge, did you? Kittredge? Kittredge? No. Why do you ask? Oh, nothing, Jim. Forget it. You know, I haven't seen you in a long time. You, you look sort of run down. You don't think a doctor's examination, a blood test perhaps might be in order? No, what? Let's go home. But I've got to check the control room first. We've got circuits there that you can't monkey with. Coming? Oh, sure, Jim, let's go. man murdered. One of them, Kittredge, the scientist, by somebody calling himself the mysterious Mr. M. 
That's the story for publication, and that's all. Look, I know the newspapers aren't supposed to learn that Kittredge is the key to all this or that Jim Farrell has disappeared. But don't you think it's time I was told? Kittredge invented a submarine engine that will revolutionize ocean travel. M is after it. And we think he's using Jim Farrell to get it. I'll wake him now and cue him for 12 o'clock. What about contacting Grant Farrell? We'll condition Jim to take care of that for us, too. Farrell. Farrell. Now what? Let's go home. But I've got to check the control room first. We've got circuits there that you can't monkey with. Coming? Oh, sure, Jim. Let's go. Feel any better, Jim? A little, Gray. Think you can answer a few more questions? I'll try. What made you take me to the control room of the plant and then attack me? I've already told you, Gray, I don't remember. My mind's a blank on all you say happened. Tampering with the controls, the fire, the explosion. Just what do you remember, Jim? Only my arrival at the plant. Do you remember meeting a Mr. M? Mr. M. Who is he? Should I know him? We thought you might have been with him. No. I was at Silver Lake Lodge alone. The lodge has been closed for two months. But I'm sure I was there. It isn't advisable to question him anymore. His condition is quite critical. And we've got to take blood from him for a test. It's my duty, Jim, to inform you you're under arrest. Don't worry, Jim. I'm sure you're one of Mr. M's victims. The minute I can prove that, you'll be in the clear. Thanks, Grant. And the sum of $5,000 is hereby offered for information leading to the capture, dead or alive, of the murderous criminal who calls himself Mr. M. That's exactly the way I want it, Mr. Weatherby. Mrs. Waldron, my father was your lawyer for many years. Now I've inherited his duties, and among them is the right to advise you. Don't offer this reward. But why, Mr. Weatherby? Private citizens should leave such things to the police. And a maniac like this Mr. M might strike back. It hasn't been released to the papers yet, but Mr. M tried to kill Grandma last night. What? Yes. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, if you will sign this, my office will handle the matter.
there you are. And now, if you'll excuse me. Certainly. The reward will be announced this afternoon. Derek will give you any other information you want. Will you come with me, dear? I haven't any will anymore. It's as if, as if something were compelling me. I don't know what it is. You're tired, dear. The shock of last night was too much for you. Why don't you lie down and rest? Clear, Mr. Walden. Having your grandmother off of that reward was a smart move, Anthony. Wasn't it? Police will never connect Mr. M with the Waldrons now. Do you think it's safe to give your grandmother any more hypnotrine? Yes, now that we know how to control the dosage. We're still not sure how long the effect lasts. Can't take any chances. I'll say we can't. If she knew you were alive, she'd report you to the police. As it is, Grandma's reputation for doing good will cover a multitude of our sins. You have a point there. But we still have plenty to worry about with Jim Farrell in the hands of the police. As we don't know yet how long hypnotrine stays in the system, suppose he comes out of it. Remember enough to hang us all. What's this? It's tagged just like the first one. Listen to this. This record contains further orders from the real Mr. M. Obey them or the police will be told that Anthony Walton is not dead as they believe. How he gets those records to us is beyond me. The police don't frighten me half as much. Come on, play it. Let's find out what he has to say before we decide what to do about him. a mind reader to know about the reward. Maybe Jim Farrell's condition isn't as critical as the papers are saying. You've got to hand it to that, Mr. M. He's been a big help so far. Yes, but just the same, he's using us to get the Kittredge submarine engine for himself. I'd do the same thing if I were in his place. Well, he's got all the advantage. He knows us while we don't know him. But he can't do without us, not until he gets the hypnotrine or learns how to trace the blueprints of the parts for the Kittredge engine. He'll never get either. Destruction of the master plan falls right into our hands. Sooner or later, with millions involved, he'll have to reveal himself. And then watch who walks away with the take. But you better do just what he suggests. Just what we thought. Blair's still with the chemist. Jim's blood test shows traces of the same chemical we found in the bodies of the men Mr. M murdered. Then Jim must know something about Kittredge or his engine that Mr. M wants to find out about. It. No doubt of it. Incidentally, our chemists still can't analyze the stuff. They will. Meanwhile, the only direct lead we have is that taxi receipt we found in Jim's pocket. Yes? I'm Mr. Lamont to see you, sir. Have him come in with her. I wonder what he wants. Yeah. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello, Lamont. Good afternoon. I just stopped in to tell you about Grandma Waldron's reward. $5,000 for information leading to the arrest and conviction of Mr. M. Is that so? Yes, yeah, she wants to help. Probably won't, though. Why not? Rewards generally bring phone calls from amateur sleuths and cranks. 
Not always, of course, but usually. I see. I hadn't thought about that. Well, just the same, there's the check. We can't take it. That sort of thing has to be handled through the newspapers. Is that all, Mr. Lamont? Yes. Uh, thank you for your time, Lieutenant. Use the hall door if you wish. Something new on the taxi lead? Yes, sir. The company just phoned back. They've located the driver who picked up your brother last night, Mr. Farrell. He's number 37. He'll report to you at your brother's apartment. Fortunately, taxi driver number 37 is on an out-of-town call, so he can't be sent to see Grand Farrell until he gets back. Well, what are you going to do about it? I've contacted Shrek, and I think I can fix it so we can get rid of the driver and capture Grand Farrell at the same time. Do that, Derek, and we're in the clear. All the way, Marina. We'll put him under hypnotrine and let him do away with Jim Farrell for us. Seven. That's him, all right. Your name, Harper? Yeah. Well, get out. What's the idea? The less you know or remember, Harper, the more chance you have of staying alive. Now, do as he says. company's insurance policy with the Nord plant to see if any individual profited from its destruction. That was a good idea, Shirley. <laughs> yes, but it didn't lead anywhere. Mr. Grant Farrell? That's right. Come in. They told me at the office that you wanted to ask about a passenger I carried last night. Yes, I believe it was my brother. Uh, what does he look like? Well, here's a picture of him. Well, yes, I've seen this man before, only he didn't look just like that. What do you mean? Well, I beg your pardon, sir, but he looked as if he'd been out all night, uh, sort of dazed. Oh, I see. Where did you pick him up? At the Ardmore storage garage on 8th Street. He came by as I drove up, and then I uh, took him out to North Plant. What on earth was he doing in a downtown garage? He said he was having his car fixed in the shop there. I want you to drive me to that garage. Want to come along, Shirley? Yes, indeed. Almost there. The garage is in the next block. Pull up a few doors this side of the place so I can look it over. Yes, sir. The shop is on the sixth floor. I'll drive you there up the ramp. No, oh, never mind. Thank you, sir. Shall I wait? No, that'll be off. something funny about that driver. His story doesn't match. How do you mean? He says he drove Jim from here to the Nord plant. That's six miles. The taxi fare would have been about three dollars. But the receipt found on Jim was only for a dollar. He was very anxious to drive you into that building. Why'd you let him get away? He didn't get away. If we were right about him, he'll park around the corner and come sneaking back on foot. You were right. Now I'm going in there and see what this is all about. Oh, and I want you to phone Kirby. Have him come here at once. All right, Dan. Hey, where's 
Farrell, didn't he come up here? Don't you remember? You were supposed to bring him here. But he wouldn't let me drive him up. Say, wait a minute. Maybe he got wise to something. You didn't make any slips, did you? Not a one. And I'd have sworn he fell for my story. Well, it's a sin something went wrong. Well, there's nothing left to do but clear out of here before the cops arrive. Get the car started. What's your hurry? Get out of that car. Grant was investigating brought us to the Ardmore storage garage at 8th and Laurel. Why there? He claims that's where he picked up Jim. Grant thinks it may be a trap and he wants Kirby Walsh to dash right over here as fast as he can. Right. Hey, where's Farrell? Didn't he come up here? Don't you remember? You were supposed to bring him here. But he wouldn't let me drive him up. Say, wait a minute. Maybe he got wise to something. You didn't make any slips, did you? Not a one. Not a sworn he fell for my story. Well, it's a sin something went wrong. Well, there's nothing left to do but clear out of here before the cops arrive. Get the car started. What's your hurry? Get out of that car.
inside? Yes, I just got back from phoning Blair. I was only a few blocks away when your message reached me. Got here as fast as I could, Greg. Unfortunately, it wasn't fast enough. You mean it was a trap? Yes, just as I figured. Won't do any good to go in there now, Kirby. There's a fire escape on the other side. They've already gotten away. Well, what's our next move? Well, have some of your men go through the building. There may be a clue in there that'll lead us to Mr. M. I'll send out a call from the car. What you and Donna should do now is lie low. Farrell got a good look at you. We have more than Farrell to worry about. Weatherby's upstairs talking to Grandma. Yeah, what about that lawyer? If your grandmother ever comes out from under that hit between Mr. Waldron, she's liable to say plenty. She won't come out of it. But there's still a chance she might. All right, get up there and listen in. If anything goes wrong, don't let Weatherby leave this house. Oh, perfectly well, Weatherby. I won't sign these documents till I've talked the whole thing over with Marina and Derek. But, Mrs. Waldron, it's important there be no further delay in the matter. After all, I'm thinking of your interests. Then why don't you handle my affairs the way your father did when he was alive? I'm trying to, but frankly, you've made it very difficult the last two months. Why, it's almost as if you've become another person. I... perhaps you're right. Sometimes you forget that Grandma hasn't been well. I have been ill, haven't I? I, I almost forgot. Oh, yes, and I have too. Uh, about the papers, shall I come back for them? Of course, but let me send for you. Certainly. Good night, Mrs. Waldron. Good night. isn't as young as she used to be, Mr. Weatherby. She's aged a lot recently. I should have realized that, Miss Lamont. I'm sorry. Good night. Good night. Grandma? Yes, Marina? You're going to bed, dear, right now. Oh, darling, I... And no arguments. Dear, darling. Well, I certainly had a scare. I thought Grandma was coming out from under the influence of hepatrine and that Weatherby was suspicious. What makes you so sure now that he isn't? He's convinced she's failing from old age. Does Grandma need any more hepatrine? I don't think so. But how did you know what went on upstairs? I had Derek listen from the hall, just in case. That was a smart move. I'd have felt easier if I'd known Derek was there. I was worried myself for a while about Weatherby. I'm still worried about Grandma. Yes, he's pretty feeble at that. Maybe a reaction from the chemicals, so we'll have to watch out. Nothing drastic must happen to Grandma. Her fine reputation in this town is the best shield we possess. Ironical, though, isn't it? That she got up partly trying to live down your past. Fortunately, neither she nor the police know that I'm alive. Mr. Warren! Look. Why did you get this record, Archie? In the cabinet with the M tags. It's from that guy who calls himself the real Mr. M. We know who it's from. Your plan to send the police on a wild goose chase for a make-believe Mr. M, while you search for the new Kittredge submarine engine has failed. Detail a man to watch Grant Farrell, who has been sent from Washington to locate that engine. Be prepared to take advantage of any discovery he makes. Disobey this order at your peril. The mysterious Mr. M. I don't like this situation at all. Who does? There's nothing we can do about it. Our only chance is hold out on him once we get the complete plans for the engine. Now you're talking sense, Derek. Hold out on him. Make him reveal himself. Get in touch with Donager. Have him trail Grant Farrell. Right. I'd lock the garage, Kirby. The station guard's outside not to let anyone enter. Kirby had men search the place last night, went over it himself just now. And not a clue to Mr. M or to Dr. Kittredge's missing plans for the miracle submarine of his. 
from the way Emma's been acting, we can assume that Kittredge must have had help in developing his invention. Well, why haven't those who worked with him contacted the police? The doctor is very secretive, Shirley. He may have taken a lesson from the way the government developed the atomic bomb. You mean they might have contracted for outside work under a dozen different names? Exactly. And Em is trying to locate them. In that case, we're really up against something. Say, we may be overlooking our best bet. My brother Jim. He may be able to give us a lead to the companies that have been helping Kittredge. But you've already questioned him without getting anything. I questioned him about Mr. M, not about Kittredge's submarine engine. Uh, call the hospital, will you, Captain Blair, and tell him I'm coming over. Want to come along, Shirley? Sure. Your brother's come to see you, Mr. Farrell. Dr. Blakely said you could just stay a few minutes. Yes, I know. Jim. Jim, this is Grant. Hello, Grant. I'm very sorry, Jim, but I do need your help. Sure, Grant. Sure. Do you recognize this man as Dr. Kittredge? No. He's Goodhue. Arthur Goodhue. Did you ever do any work for him? Yes. What kind of work, Jim? Was it for a submarine engine? He never said, but I always thought it was. Just one more question, Jim, then you can rest. Don't bother about me, Grant. I have plenty of time to rest. Do you know anyone else who did any special work for this man? My friend, Bill Brewster. Bill's head of research at Chandler Oil. You're developing a new fuel. You'd better go now, Mr. Farrell. Isn't there something I can do? I'm afraid not. Yes? Two friends of Jim Farrell to see you, Mr. Brewster. Send them in. Make yourself comfortable, gentlemen. I'll be with you in a moment. Take your time. A lot of inflammable chemicals in here, so it's very dangerous to smoke. Thanks for opening a safe for us, Mr. Brewster. Well, you won't gain anything by holding me up. There's nothing of any value in that safe to you. If it's money you're referring to, that's not what we're after. It isn't. We want the formula for the new gasoline you're working on, for submarine engines. Well, how did you find out about that? There isn't much Mr. M doesn't know. Mr. M? See what's in the safe. Miss Graham wants to talk to you about that formula, so it'll save time if you bring it along with you. Well, it isn't here. Maybe it's out of the field laboratory office. It is, and you can't get it out of there. There's nothing in the safe at all but this. Looks like a carburetor. Small, though. A model? For the new fuel you're making up? Answer it. Yes? Grant Farrell to see you, Mr. Brewster. Just a moment. We can't let him wait outside. The secretary might tell him two friends of his brother in here. Yeah, that's right. Let him in as soon as we get behind the screen. Get rid of him fast and don't give him any information, understand? Don't try any funny business, because if you do, you'll get the first bullet. Have Mr. Farrell come in. You don't know me, Mr. Brewster. I do know your brother. Glad to meet you, Mr. Farrell. Say, by the way, how is Jim? Well, he's in a very serious condition. The doctor doesn't give me much hope that he'll pull through. Sorry to hear that. A very fine person. In fact, none better. Thanks. I think he's pretty swell myself. Oh, I was just getting ready to leave. I had an appointment. Well, if you could answer a couple of questions before you go, it would help me a lot. Have a smoke? No, thanks. That sign really means what it says. Oh, I didn't notice it. I'm sorry to rush you, but I'm really in a hurry. Well, I'll be just as brief as I can. Oh, you were saying... Your phone is ringing. Yes. Thank you. 
Hello, Brewster speaking. Oh, I'm sorry, Jackson, I'm busy. I can't talk now. I'll have to call you back. I'm curious to meet the two men that are here with you, Brewster. Come out from behind that screen. <laughs> Sam's men beat us to it. Brewster's been shot. I don't know how badly I'm going back to see. Wait here for me. And in the mix-up, Barron was killed. But I got Brewster, so I don't think Farrell will be getting any information. What do we do now? Get out to that field office. Where's Grant? Out with Shirley. Telephoned in, he got himself a lead to him through a wounded man named Brewster. We'll be at the Chandler Oil Field any minute now. I know, but I won't relax until we have that secret formula for motor fuel that Brewster talked about. We'll get it. It's in the field laboratory where he said it is. I'm Grant Farrell. Okay, Mr. Farrell. You get things started. I'll go inside and get the papers. Shirley. Stay where you are until I find the lights.
You return sooner than I expected, Kirby. There was no use staying at the hospital. Grant's brother Jim won't live until morning. I couldn't see him. That's a tough break. If you heard from Grant, I'd like to let him know. He and Shirley Clinton are still out at the Chandler oil field, following up a lead they got on the Kittredge submarine engine. And now there are complications. Complications? We just got a radio report. The field is on fire. I'm getting out there fast. So you two are safe. All the apparatus in town is either here or on its way out. They'll have things under control in no time at all. Well, if the fire can be prevented from spreading to the rest of the field, the damage shouldn't be too great. The insurance investigator at work. <laughs> come on, Kirby, take us up to the main gate. Maybe we can be of some help. I think we'd better get back as soon as we can, Grant. Why? It's too late to... Oh, bad news about Jim? I was at the hospital before I came out. died a few minutes ago. Oh, Grant, I, I can't put into words what I want to say. Neither can I. You don't have to, I understand. It's over for Jim, but it's not over for us. No, it's not over for us. We're going to clear Jim's name and get this mysterious Mr. M. This is the mysterious Mr. M. By obeying previous instructions to watch Grant Farrell, you have made progress. Continue until you have located all companies making the various parts for the Kittredge submarine engine. Follow my orders and your identities will not be revealed to the police. The model carburetor and formula for the new fuel for this engine are now in my possession. The carburetor was in the closet. How did it get out of there? Get to one side, Marina. I'm fed up with your tricks, Anthony. Don't be stupid. I have been, but no longer. I'm putting an end to this masquerade of the mysterious Mr. M. I am better the character of Mr. M to fool the police. Not you and Marina. Somebody else is using it now to fool us. I agree with Derek. The chances favor that somebody being you. All right, go ahead and shoot. But you won't get away with it. Why not? After you're dead, I'll call on the police. Tell them you're the real Mr. M. Then show them your laboratory. And they eventually identify you as Anthony Walton. Believed dead by them, but wanted for murder. And what are you going to do about Grandma? Keep her under hypnotrine. She still insists that Derek and I are like a loving son and daughter. When your supply of hypnotrine runs out, what then? He's right, Marina. I've worked out the dosage, but he's the only one that knows how to make it. And Grandma will talk plenty once the effect of hypnotrine wears off. I'm not double-crossing you. Under the circumstances, it's natural to think so. But our only chance is to work together. With this mysterious Mr. M? Why not for the time being? Eventually, he'll be forced to show himself to us. By then, we should be able to handle him. I guess there's nothing else we can do. 
Now that that's settled, let's get to work. Come on, Derek, let's go downstairs. By following up a Grant Farrell, we may be able to move in ahead of him again. Sure, but how are we going to know what he's doing? Through a little device I have. Where is it, Archer? Wireless dictograph. All ready for a test. The telephone number here is Matrix Five Seven One Seven Seven. Very good, Donager. Be sure that dictograph is well concealed. And don't worry about that. And leave everything just as you found it. We don't want Farrell to suspect anyone has been there. Right. I called your number and the line was busy. Then we tried again and somebody picked up the receiver and put it down without speaking. Well, my phone's a private line. Are you sure that someone picked up the receiver and then put it down again? Just as sure as I'm talking to you. Well, in that case, somebody must have been in the apartment and using your phone. Want me to radio one of the squad cars to drop by and investigate? No, I'll do that myself. I'll phone you as soon as I look the place over. Captain Blair? Yes? Grant speaking. I found a hidden dictograph in the apartment. Nice work. We now have a beautiful opportunity to bait a hook for this mysterious Mr. M. Kirby and I thought something like this would happen, and we figured a way we think will work. Yeah, what is it? Shirley will give you the setup. Meet her in front of your apartment. I'll be waiting for her. Well, I hate to admit it, Shirley, but I'm just about licked. You aren't thinking of quitting, are you, Grant? No, not unless I'm forced to. But that's liable to happen any day now. If Kittredge hadn't been so secretive, it would have been a simple matter to locate that submarine engine. Yes, simple for us and also simple for Mr. M. As it is, I believe he's just as much in the dark as we are about who's doing the work. Hello? Yes, Blair, this is Grant. What? Does it tie in with the Kittredge submarine engine? Great, I'll check it right away. Look up the number of the Elliott Die Casting Company, will you, Shirley? All right, Grant. 
Elliot Die Casting, 30 South Elwood. Phone Carlson, 1113. Thomas Elliot, please. Grant Farrell speaking. It's Grant Farrell, Kirby. Everything's set, Grant. I understand you're making a new design piston for a submarine engine. That's right. Go ahead and talk. Yes, I know. Captain Blair told me he'd spoken to you. It's just possible Kittredge didn't use his own name. You sound mighty convincing. I'll show you a picture of Kittredge. If he's the man who placed the order, will you turn the design of the pistons over to the police? Okay, I'll see you at 4 o'clock. You've been a big help, Tom. Now we'll take over. What do you mean? Well, it's too dangerous a trap for you to go any further. One of our men will take your place. Well, why? You and Grant will be here to protect me. Well, I can't see you taking the risk, that's all. If this Mr. M is as clever as you say he is, he may know me. But then? That's right. We'll do our best to see that nothing happens to you. We'll not only get the design for the pistons, but we'll learn everything else Elliot knows about the Kittredge engine. Yes, but it's going to be risky business bringing him here. Too risky. You'll have to give him an injection of hypnotrine at his office. What do you got there? A rush shipment from the Catskill Equipment Company, Mr. Elliott. I'll check it later. Okay. Let me talk to Lieutenant Walsh. He just went out to the gate. Have him call me the moment he comes back. Send me for some information. Mr. M, we've been expecting you and are ready. Get away from that! Mr. M is so much interested in what you can tell him about Dr. Kittredge's submarine engine that he even sent this along. What's in that needle? Hypnotrine. It's a chemical that compels people to obey orders and tell the truth. You're not going to use that on me. <laughs> Delivery of material. You will remember nothing of what has just happened. You will be exactly the same as you were before receiving the injection of hypnotrine. But you'll carry out the instructions I'm about to give you. How about it, Kirby? Everything under control? So far, every corner of the place is being guarded. Well, it isn't four o'clock yet. I'm sure Mr. M won't disappoint us. By the way, Elliot has something he wants to talk to you about. All right, I'll go right up and see him. I sent for the delivery men. Shipping department, Elliot speaking. Send a couple of men up to my office to pick up a crate for immediate delivery. Good idea, locking your door when you're alone. I don't like to be disturbed when I'm working. Seen anything of Mr. M? He hasn't been here so far unless he's invisible. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Come in. There's a truck waiting for that packing case. The whole thing was a trap. Farrell used the dictograph to trick us into thinking that Elliot was working on the submarine engine. Elliot told me after I injected the hypnotrine. You disposed of him, of course. No, I didn't. You fool, Derek. Elliot with hypnotrine in his system might give the police a lead to us. There won't be any, Elliot. I conditioned him to arrange for Grand Farrell to meet Mr. M at exactly four o'clock.
Julie. Anything wrong? I thought I might be of some help. Oh, I'm afraid not. This Mr. M is much too dangerous. I suppose there's no use in my arguing. Not a bit. Now, I've got to get back to Elliot. Elliot! Don't touch that. Have you gone crazy? I'm one of Mr. M's men, controlled by his mysterious power. That flame is eating into a hydrogen tank. When it reaches the gas, this place will be blown to bits. You thought you were setting a trap for Mr. M. Instead, you walked into one of his making. Don't you know you'll be killed with me? Keep away from that hammer. That's better. Now put your hands above your head. We haven't much more time, Elliot. Mr. M wanted you to receive one final message. a trap. Farrell used the dictograph to trick us into thinking that Elliot was working on the submarine engine. Elliot told me after I injected the hypnotrine. You disposed of him, of course. No, I didn't. You fool, Derek. Elliot with hypnotrine in his system might give the police a lead to us. There won't be any, Elliot. I conditioned him to arrange for Grand Farrell to meet Mr. M at exactly four o'clock. Touch that. Have you gone crazy? I'm one of Mr. M's men, controlled by his mysterious power. That flame is eating into a hydrogen tank. When it reaches the gas, this place will be blown to bits. You thought you were setting a trap for Mr. M. Instead, you walked into one of his making. Don't you know you'll be killed with me? Keep away from that hammer. That's better. Now put your hands above your head. We haven't much more time, Elliot. Mr. M wanted you to receive one final message. that Elliot's dead. M got to him some way. I can't understand how M or anyone else working for him could get into this plant. Elliot went absolutely crazy. Claimed he was one of M's men. Was bragging about the secret power M controls. Then the whole thing's beyond me. Well, it's so far over my head, I'm going to telegraph Washington. See what they can suggest. The situation could have been avoided had we taken Kittredge's invention a little more seriously when he first brought our attention. The idea of an engine that would enable luxury liners to travel 30 knots an hour underwater is too fantastic for belief. Well, if Kittredge hadn't been so secretive in the development of his engine, we'd probably have it in our possession at this moment. No, I doubt that very much. He was killed by the mysterious Mr. M just before he was due into Washington. Even M doesn't know where the parts of the engine are being made. Well, that was definitely proven by what happened at the Elliott plant. Then it seems to me that the important thing is to learn how M gets these people under his control. 
This injection of hypnotrine won't injure you at all, Archer. You remain perfectly normal in all respects. Maybe. For too many people you've given that stuff to have died. You didn't, Archer. Me? Yes. I experimented with you a long time ago. You suffered no ill effects. I don't remember anything about it. Under the influence of hypnotrine, you remember only what you're told to remember. Nothing else. But if you've given me that chemical once, why do you have to give it to me again? You were conditioned for just one purpose. I want information now about the man who's stolen the name I created. Mysterious Mr. M. I've already told you, you're the only Mr. M I know. This man is aware of the Kittredge submarine engine. He knows that I'm Anthony Waldron, and I'm keeping my grandmother under a hypnotic. And that Marina and Derek Lamont are working with me. It's too much information in the hands of someone that I don't know. I didn't tell him. I've never even seen him. All I know about him is the recordings he left here. Are you sure you don't know how he got them into the house? Honestly, I don't. Go ahead, use the hypnotrine. You'll see I'm telling the truth. Signal light. Someone's calling you from upstairs. We let it rest for the time being. Put guards around the grounds. I want to know the time that anyone enters or leaves. I'll attend to it right away. Why did you signal me, Derek? Whether be the lawyer and Shirley Clinton, the insurance investigator, or with Grandma Waldron. Brings those two here, and together. I don't know. Marina will tell us, of course, but I thought you'd want a first-hand report. Well, don't even trust your own sister, eh? The way things are now, I don't trust anybody. Safer that way. I'll listen in. Well, well, we were talking a moment ago about it. I didn't understand that any of my property had burned. It hasn't, but perhaps Miss Clinton can explain it better than I. Well, there was a fire, but the property wasn't yours. Well, why should an insurance company pay Grandma for something that isn't hers? Mrs. Waldron was named as co-beneficiary in a policy along with the Parker Electric Company. Parker Electric Company? What's that? A small one-man concern. The policy was taken out by a Thomas Langdon. I took for granted he was one of the many people you had assisted financially. I don't seem to recall any Thomas Langdon. Well, in that case, I'll have to delay paying you. It's all right, Mrs. Waldron. The company has to substantiate Parker's claim first through Langdon, that's all. Unfortunately, I can't help you. But of course, I hope you find him now as soon as possible. If that's all, will you please excuse me? Yes. Certainly, Mrs. Waldron. Drop in again, Shirley. I shall, and very soon. I'll be glad to drop you wherever you're going. Oh, thank you, Miss Clinton. Won't you sit down, Grandma? No, thanks, dear. I'm tired. Tell Marina I've gone to my room. I'll do that, Grandma. What is it all about? Sounded to me as though we got another lead to Kittredge's invention. Thanks to the Clinton girl. So that's why I'm inclined to believe that Langdon's real name will turn out to be Kittredge. Here we go again.
M. As usual, one jump ahead of us. He'll slip up one of these days, and when he does... Meanwhile, the three of us have to stick together for our own protection. What do we do now? Get that electronic ear, that's the important thing. Contact Donager and Shrek before that Shirley Clinton digs up the same information for the police. Grant, I ran across something I'm sure is going to pay off. Look at this. A fire insurance claim in favor of Jackson Parker and Cornelia Waldron. Taken out by Thomas Langdon. Langdon's dropped out of sight, and Grandma Waldron doesn't know him or Parker. Well, it could be another cover-up move on the part of Dr. Kittredge. That's what I thought. Well, it's certainly worth investigating, unless you've already talked to Parker. The office just learned his address. It's 911 Elm Street. Get him on the phone, Captain. Tell him we're on the way out to his place. Come on, Kirby. Give me the phone number of Jackson Parker, 911 Elm Street. 9-11, this is the place. Your name's Parker? Yes. I wasn't expecting you so soon. You own the Parker Electric Company? I did, until the factory burned down. We understand you're working on something called the Electronic Ear. The model is right over here on my desk with the plans. I seem to have misplaced it. I'm not used to this place yet. My blindness makes it difficult for me. Is uh, this what you're looking for? Yes, that's it. You know, it's wonderful how you gentlemen from the police pick up information. The electronic ear was my most carefully guarded secret. We have ways of learning what's going on, Mr. Parker. Any objection to our taking it with us? Not at all. We'd better be going, Shrack. You can carry the electronic ear that way, gentlemen. The special metal is dangerously radioactive. You must let me put it in this protective box. There you are, gentlemen. Well, thank you for all your trouble. I hope I've been a help. You have no idea how much help you've been. Of course, my property will be returned when you're through it. Sure, sure, Mr. Parker. We'll return it to you. Police. This is Lieutenant Walsh and Miss Shirley Clinton. I wish you'd come first. First? Two other men were here. I thought they were from the police and gave them the model and plans for the electronic ear. Electronic ear? A supersonic device for underwater communication. I developed it for Mr. Langdon. That does it, Grant. Ends beat us to the punch. What did these men look like? I couldn't see them. I'm blind. Oh, we didn't know. Captain Blair told me your names over the phone. So I became suspicious when I heard one called Shrek. And you had to play along. But I told them the ear was dangerous because of its high radioactivity and put it in a protective box. That box is a direction finder. Then we can follow them? Precisely. If you'll step over here to this map. This operates on the radar principle. The direction fiber itself is a small radio sending set. The receiver, coordinated with the map, receives the radio waves and translates them into actual locations here on the map. It's an improvement over the old-fashioned method of triangulation. Well, I'll say it's an improvement. Well, according to this, they're on Main Street heading for the waterfront. This is a shortwave transmitter. If you've a radio in your car, one of you can stay here and relay directions to the others from the chart on the map. Shirley, you stay here with Mr. Parker. We'll call you from the car. Hello, 
Shirley. This is Kirby Walsh calling. Where are you? On Main Street, moving toward the Bay District. They're still heading in that direction. We'll get over there as soon as we can. They stopped on the 500 block Front Street, but they're on their way again. Sure, it was a cinch. Parker thought we were the police. What made him think that? Search me. Hey, handle that carefully. It's radioactive. And since there's no radioactive metal in any electronic here, Parker said there was. Parker must have been wise to you all the time. This box contains a direction finder. Parker's blind. He couldn't follow us. Yeah, but the police could. Well, let's get rid of that thing right away. Wait a minute. Take you to drive out through the high tower road. About 20 minutes. What time does your watch say? 2:35. That agrees with mine. Take this direction finder with you, and make sure you're off the road by three o'clock. I don't get it. At exactly three o'clock, things are going to start to happen out there, and when they do, nothing will be able to stop them. Then all we have to do is drive out through the high tower road. That's right. Let me off now. I've got to get to a phone. North on Garfield, heading toward the open country. We'll head for Garfield and go north. They turned off Garfield onto the high tower road. So will we. Where are you now, Kirby? On the high tower road. High Tower Road at 2.59. Is anyone following us? Can't see anyone. The other cars changed direction. Going west on Bolton Highway. Long ways ahead of us, Grant. You better step on it. What did that? Your guess is as good as mine. Look, Grant. Step on it. You can't turn back now. Jackson Parker investigation, Captain. Were we right in believing that he was making parts for Kittredge's submarine engine? Yes, sir. He developed an electronic device for detecting objects under the water, but the mysterious Mr. M got it away from him. Another lead gone, eh? Not quite, sir. Parker is blind and thought at first M's men were from the police, 
but he later became suspicious and set a trap for them. What sort of a trap? He put the electronic device in a small box that is a direction finder attached to a receiver in his workshop. And Shirley is directing Grant and Kirby by shortwave to where M's men are going. Right, sir. Garfield under the high tower road. So will we. Where are you now, Kirby? On the high tower road. We're off the high tower road at 259. Is anyone following us? Can't see anyone. The other cars changed direction. Going west on Bolton Highway. Long ways ahead of us, Crank. You better step on it. What's in that? Your guess is as good as mine. Step on it. You can't turn back now. Break it up and throw it out. Come on, Kirby, snap out of it. What hit us? We just missed getting 150,000 volts. Calling Kirby Walsh. Come in, please. Urgent. Hello, Shirley. This is Grant. Grant, the direction finder stopped operating. Yeah, so have we. What do you mean? The high tension wires and towers fell out here. Notify the power company to send a repair crew. Are you both all right? Yes, we're all right. Well, the direction finder's all washed up. You get a car and go to Waldron's. There's a possibility Mr. M may have gotten his lead to Parker there. I'm going to headquarters. Okay. In an effort to locate manufacturers making parts for Kittredge's submarine engine, pictures of the doctor have been sent to all companies within a radius of 100 miles. Well, that may get results. If any of them have been doing work for him, they'll certainly report it. I hope so. Between the newspapers and civic pressure on one side, and the commissioner and the DA on the other. I'm about ready to... I gave orders not to be disturbed. Oh, hello, Shirley. Come on in. Was well, Parker able to give you any more information about Kittredge? Well, the electronic ear is the only thing he's been working on, Grab, and he can't duplicate it without the plans Em's men took. This is really amazing, Anthony. With this electronic ear, Dr. Kittredge has solved the problem of underwater radar. It hardly seems possible that anything this small could do that. The main feature of this invention is that its size is not important to its operations as a microwave receiver. The plans show this model is made 50 times larger than designed. Reduced to its original size, it would be extremely small, Derek. Tiny enough to be inserted into the human ear by means of a very simple operation. Tell me, could we send out a microwave beam that it could pick up? Certainly. And anyone with hypnotry in this system could be commanded at will, no matter where he was without anyone else hearing the voice. Such a person could be very useful to us. Yes. We can do it. As soon as we can get our hands on Walter Farrell. Now, Mrs. Walden, please try and remember whether you told anybody at all that you were co-beneficiary with Mr. Parker on that insurance policy. Well, naturally, it was a topic of conversation here in the house. I was so happy Dr. Kittredge was thinking of me, even when he was doing great things. Dr. Kittredge never told Grandma what inventions he was working on. Whenever he needed money, he just asked for it and got it. He never talked about his affairs. Nobody knows that better than I. But since his death, his secrets haven't been so well kept. I don't quite understand what you mean, Lieutenant. Shortly after you learned about Mr. Parker, M's men located him and stole one of Dr. Kittredge's most valuable inventions. Grandma, I think the police should be told about Crandall. Crandall seemed like such a deserving young man. Who is this Crandall? What should the police know? I shouldn't like to wrong him, Marina. Well, if we're wrong, he can easily clear himself. Perhaps. Crandall was our chauffeur. Was? He left without saying a word. When? We don't know exactly. Was he around when you talked about Kittredge and Parker? He was bringing in some packages from the car. It's very possible he overheard our conversation. Even so, I can't see why he left without collecting his salary. Don't concern yourself about his salary, Mrs. Walden. I'm sure the mysterious Mr. M paid him more than you ever would. Mercy me. What is Crandall's full name? 
It's Frederick Crandall. His home address? I don't believe I ever knew it. Did you, Grandma? I, uh, why, his references were so splendid, I didn't ask. I can get it from the motor vehicle department. I'm sorry I had to bother you. But you didn't. Show Mr. Walsh to the door, my dear. The Walters gave me a lead on a chauffeur named Crandall who quit them in a hurry. I've checked with the Department of Motor Vehicles and he isn't registered. Phony name, eh? Not a bad lead. What are you going to do about it? I'm going back to Walters and see if I can pick up anything on Crandall. This one came by special messenger. By following my instructions, you obtained the Kittredge electronic ear. Kirby Walsh is about to visit you again, alone. Use hypocrisy on him. Have Walsh remove Grant Farrell. Disobey, and I'll tell the police what I know. Your make-believe Mr. M is now real and mysterious, because I am he. There's our greatest danger, not Kirby Walsh. Just because someone moves in on a scheme that we were clever enough to set up, doesn't mean he's going to get away with it. So far, he has, Anthony. And what he knows about us doesn't help any. I'll say it hasn't. He knows that Anthony Waldron is not dead as the police believe. That we're keeping Grandma a virtual prisoner and that we're after the Kittred submarine engine. Our only chance is to stick together. Get him at the showdown before he gets us. Play it again. I want to listen to that voice. This is the first time Mr. M hasn't whispered. I'm going down below. Play it again. By following my instructions, you obtained the Kittred's electronic ear. Kirby Walsh is about to visit you again, alone. Use hypocrisy on him. Have Walsh remove Grant Farrell. Disobey, and I'll tell the police what I know. Your make-believe Mr. M is now real and mysterious, because I am he. Satisfied, or do you want to hear it again? No, it's no use. I thought I might recognize the voice, but I can't. Too bad we sent Kirby Walsh on a wild goose chase. When he finds out there isn't any Frederick Crandall, he'll probably be back. We'll be ready for him. Visitors for a while. Open that door. You must have been dreaming. Dreaming or not, the conversation was real interesting. Is that another closet? No, that's Grandma Waldron's bedroom. She's lying down. See if it's okay for me to look in. Convinced now that you made a mistake? I heard the voice of the mysterious Mr. M. Where's the record it was on? Over there's the phonograph. I know what the record isn't. I saw that as soon as I came into the room. Then it's merely your word against mine that it was ever there. Maybe. Does Grandma Walter know what's going on in her house? Why don't you wake her up and ask her? That'll come later. Right now, I'm going to find out how you get in and out of this room without using the doors. To make sure you don't get into mischief. Put out your hands. That's too bad Kittredge was so secretive. Well, we can't blame him for using precautions with an invention that permits submarines to be built as large as ocean liners and travel 30 knots an hour underwater. I suppose you're right. If I were superstitious, I would say the mysterious Mr. M has a sixth sense. It certainly thinks so, the way he gets the jump on us, the moment we get a lead to any of the engine parts. Which leads me to believe that he's dependent upon our information. Then where's the leak? I wish I knew. Nobody but Weatherby, the lawyer, the Waldron, the police and ourselves had an inkling that Parker was associated with Kittredge. Personally, as far as I'm concerned, there's not a suspect among them. Oh, 
unit signaling. Go on up and see what she wants. You still think there's a secret door? Yes, and I'll continue to look for it. Don't bother, Lieutenant Walls. Drop that gun. Drop it! How did he get in here, Marina? Somebody left the front door open and I walked in. What a setup you got here, Derek. You're gonna see a lot more of it. He can only be conditioned for one job at a time. When he recovers, we'll have him phone Farrell at police headquarters. Transmetals Incorporated never saw Kittredge. Tubular Steel Company, no work for Kittredge. This method of trying to find out who is working on Kittredge's submarine engine is like finding a needle in a haystack. Just a part of police routine, Jerry. Hello. Kirby Walsh is calling Grant Farrell on extension two. Okay. Hello, Kirby. I checked Crandall's room. He didn't leave much, but I did find two leads. Oh, that's great. What are they? Envelopes from two old letters. Two different addresses. You take one, I'll take the other. Okay, what is it? The Harbor Cafe and a rooming house on Elm Street. You're nearest the cafe. I'll leave right away. That's just a sample of how useful Walsh is going to become to us. I'll phone Donninger and Shrack and tell them the Farrell is on his way. That's Farrell. He's getting out of his car. Cut him as he crosses the sidewalk. Now he's closing in on us. Open the glove compartment. There's something in there that'll stop him. As soon as I make this next turn, toss a couple of them out on the street.
Buckley. I'm ready with your call to Captain Blair in Mint City, Mr. Castleton. Thanks. Hello, Captain Blair? Castleton, Washington talking. Yes, Mr. Castleton. I know you're doing all you can, Captain, but we're extremely worried here regarding the Kittrick situation. We realize on this end how disastrous it would be if an engine capable of moving submarines as large as ocean liners should fall into the hands of the mysterious Mr. M. Well, has any progress been made since Grant's last report? You'll get a report in a few hours. Grant is out following a lead that should bring results. That's Pearl. He's getting out of his car. Got him as he crosses the sidewalk. Shaken. Now he's closing in on us. Open the glove compartment. There's something in there that'll stop him. As soon as I make this next turn, toss a couple of them out on the street. out of that hypnotrine long enough to talk. And we'll all wind up in jail. And the police will find out I'm not dead, as they think. But that won't happen. We're in this thing for big stakes. The plans for the Kittredge submarine motor. And when we get those plans, we'll have a prize that every nation in the world will bid for. Yes, provided that we're not double-crossed by whoever it is who's appropriated your title of the mysterious Mr. M. He won't betray us. He wants what we want, and he knows that only we can get it for him. Perhaps he's not as smart as we think. I'm going to you. Hello, Derek. Any further news from Dollinger and Strike? Not since they reported Grand Farrell was drowned. But they're wrong. Wrong? How do you know? I picked up a police broadcast. It's sure lucky we have Lieutenant Walsh under the influence of hypnotrine. Certainly won't do us any harm. Well, how's the new electronic gear coming along? Here it is, reduced in size and perfect. I'm going to fit it deep into the conch of Walsh's ear after puncturing the drum. It will pick up our microwave beam. And the hypnotrine in his system will cause him to obey your orders the moment he hears whatever signal we decide to give him. How'd it go? Fine. His ear will look and feel normal. But when you contact him by microwave, your voice will throw him into a hypnotic condition. Let's make a test now. Use a frequency of half a meter. <laughs> Lieutenant Walsh, follow the instructions you will now receive. Get up and come to me.
stop. Light the Bunsen burner on the workbench. Receiving station for your orders. Your voice will penetrate his inner ear no matter where he is. And nobody around him will hear any voice? No. It will be audible only to him. And he won't remember anything that has happened to him since he's been here. We'll have a human robot who'll be in the confidence of both Grant Farrell and the police. And he'll be able to tell us all their plans. Yes, but handle him carefully. If he does anything too crude, the police will become suspicious. And then he will be of no further value to us. I understand that. I'll try him out by sending him to search Weatherby's files. Papers should be there showing payments made by my grandmother to Kittredge. It may lead to our finding of the master plans for the submarine engine. Yes, but Weatherby is our lawyer. We could ask him to bring such papers directly to us. And put ourselves on record as looking for the submarine plans? No. That would leave us open to a police investigation. This way, we won't be showing our hands. You're absolutely right. You heard what we just said? Yes. I want you to drive at once to Weatherby's home. And when you get there... This is an outrage. To walk in here and search my records. It's only routine, Mr. Weatherby. Mrs. Cornelia Waldron financed some of Dr. Kittredge's inventions. But I should have been informed. Where's your search warrant? If I find what I'm looking for, I won't need one. We'll see about that. Police headquarters, please connect me with Captain Blair. Hello. Yes, this is Blair. I see. Yes, of course we want that information. I'll attend to the legal end of the matter. Grant, did you arrange for Kirby to search the files of Weatherby, the Waldron's lawyer? No, is that what he's doing? Yes, he's looking for evidence of Mrs. Waldron's payments to Kittredge. Well, it isn't a bad idea. Kittredge's secrets died with him. We can use any clue we can get that'll help us find those secrets before Mr. M does. Ed? Yes? Make out a search warrant for the premises of Harold Weatherby right away. Grant will give you the details. Pick up that warrant and get right out there. What did you find, Kirby? Check for $1,000 made out to Dr. Kittredge by Cornelia Waldron. Look at the endorsements. Endorsed by Kittredge, then by Charles Fletcher, and then by the United Insurance Company. Say, this looks like an important clue. But why did Kittredge turn this $1,000 over to Fletcher? What did Fletcher pay insurance on, and uh, who is he? I never heard of him. Well, the United's the company Shirley works for. I'll phone her to meet us at headquarters with any information she could pick up on this payment by Fletcher. Maybe this time we can beat Mr. M to a real lead. Any word from Kirby Walsh yet? No. Another record from M? Yes, I found it in my car in the garage. afternoon. Well, Captain, we finally located Charles Fletcher. Give it to me fast. I've got to go back into conference with the commissioner. I found my company insured the Fletcher machine shop. The address given is Silver Falls. We teletyped the Silver Falls police and learned that Fletcher had retired, was living in Glenwood. That's 200 miles north of here. I telephoned Fletcher. He has the completed model of a generator that Kittredge commissioned him to build. 
He says it's something revolutionary and will deliver 50 times the electricity of an ordinary generator. Will he bring it to us? No, he's rather secretive about it. He says it's in a safe place, but he finally agreed to turn it over to me if I drove up there. I'm starting now. Kirby, take charge of the office until I get back. The commissioner will be glad to hear about this. I guess you'll have to go without me, Grant. How about taking me along? All right, come on. Telephone me if you're alone. Otherwise, go to a pay station and call me. You've got the number. details on what you found at Weatherby's office. Charles Fletcher in Glenwood has built a model generator for Kittredge's engine. Grant Farrell has left to get it. Anything else? No. Stay on the job and act normal. You will not remember making this call. Order Donager and Shrek to take a plane so they'll be able to reach Glenwood before Grant Farrell. Funny no one answered the door. Look. Is he dead? Yes. Someone got here ahead of us. Someone who knew about the generator motor. Mr. M's man. Yeah, it looks like their work. Then they must have gotten the model. No, I don't think so. Fletcher said he had it in a safe place. He wouldn't have meant this house. Well, maybe they forced him to tell where it was. they overlooked. I think it's the key to this puzzle. What is it? Claim check for a bag left at the Glenwood bus terminal. That must be the safe place Fletcher meant. We'll go right down there. I'll take that ticket. You drive to the terminal and get that bag. She's heading for the bus terminal. Thank 
Show your tickets, please. She made it. Well, we'll follow the bus. In that rental car? Why not? Farrell will have a dragnet out for it. Let's take the plane. That's our best chance. When we reach the first stop, I'll explain to the company officials. I'm sure my commandeering the bus this way won't reflect on you. We're always glad to cooperate with the authorities, Miss Clinton. I'm Brad Farrell. Did the young lady... Yes, sir. She left these auto keys here for you just before she took the southbound bus. She said you'd understand. Thank you very much. Shrek since they arrived at Glenwood Archer. Down is a just radio that Shirley Clinton, with the help of Grand Farrell, got the generator for the Kittridge submarine engine. Well, how could that happen? Farrell and the girl went by automobile. Donager and Shrek went by plane. There was a shooting scrap at Fletcher's. Farrell delayed them while Shirley Clinton picked up the generator from a locker at the bus station. Where are Donager and Shrek now? Shirley took the bus out of Glenwood. They're trying to overtake it in their plane.
can find out where he takes it through our friend here. Where's the bus driver? In the bus. His leg is broken. Well, we'll stop the first car that comes along, take him into town with us. Man Schrack has been questioned for hours without any results, Mr. Castleton. Well, what's the possibility of finally breaking him down? Not very good, but we'll put him behind bars for a long stretch. Well, that won't help us get the parts of the Kittredge engine that the mysterious Mr. M has, or those other parts that you have it located. Captain Blair and I realize that. You both must remember that an invention which permits submarines to be built as large as ocean liners and capable of traveling at 30 or more knots an hour can be put to dangerous uses in the wrong hands. We do, and as soon as I finish talking to you, we're going to follow up on one lead we have. Well, can you tell me what it is? Yes, Weatherby, the Waldron lawyer. The clue we got to Fletcher's generator came from the files of the Waldron estate. Weatherby was the only one besides ourselves who knew about it. That sounds promising. Good luck, Grant. You won't have any trouble finding Weatherby, Captain. You're talking to Shrek. I received a note with a $1,000 bill as a retainer to handle your case. The note wasn't signed, so I came to see you in order to get the man's address and return the money. You don't have to cover up with me, Weatherby. I know Mr. M just as well as you do. Please, Shrek, I don't want to hear about M or anybody else. What do you mean? I'll leave the $1,000 with the officer at the desk. Please see that it's returned to the person who sent it to me. You can't get away with this. That remains to be seen. Turnkey. Benny? Captain Blair, I'd like to see you before you leave the building, Mr. Weatherby. Thanks. I was going to drop in on him anyway. You know what's good for you, Weatherby? You'll keep your trap shut. Why don't you take some of your own advice, Sir Shrek? Good afternoon. How are you? Hello, good Mr. day, Mr. Weatherby. I understand you wish to see me, Captain. Yes, Mr. Weatherby. Ethics, of course, prohibit discussing your client's affairs with us, but there's one question I'd like to ask you about Shrek. Well, if I can answer it, I will, Mr. Farrell. Thank you. We found a lead to Glenwood, and that's where Shrack was arrested, among some papers you had concerning the Waldron estate. That's right. Did you mention that to anyone? Oh, I see what you mean. No, I didn't. Mysterious Mr. M must be clairvoyant. Well, you mean he knew about Fletcher and Kittredge's generator? Knew about it. He got it. Well, just to keep the record straight, I refuse to represent Shrack in spite of his threats about what Mr. M would do to me. Who arranged for you to defend Shrek? I received an anonymous note. The enclosed thousand dollar bill is a retainer to represent William Shrek. Please contact him at once to the city jail. The money is now with the officer at the desk downstairs to be returned when called for. Strange that among all the lawyers in the city, you were the one selected, Mr. Weatherby. Coincidence, nothing else. Well, I admire the stand you've taken, but you've certainly placed yourself in a dangerous position. Some other attorney will be engaged, and that'll be the end of it as far as I'm concerned. If not, will you notify us immediately? Why, certainly. Uh, anything else you wanted to ask me? No, I guess not. Sorry to have troubled you. Oh, no trouble at all. Well, good day. <clears throat> Weatherby, eh? Have him up on the carpet? Sort of. Judging from M's past performance, he won't take Weatherby's refusal to defend Shrek lightly. Want me to have someone tail Weatherby? No, Kirby and I'll do that. I'm not at all convinced he's in the clear. Good idea. Will someone let me in on this? I'll tell you what happened on the way. Keep him in sight, Kirby, but don't get too close. Your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road, Weatherby, and you'll be all right. I said keep your eyes on the road. Who are you and what do you want? My name wouldn't mean a thing to you, but Mr. M would like some information. Mr. M? About Shrek? Yeah. What do you have to say? I didn't let him do any talking. Why not? You have to rig a story between you to get him out. I'm not having anything to do with him. We're going back to town. Not while I'm driving, we're not. Pull over the side or I'll shoot. Go ahead and shoot. You'll die with me. Well, if it's going 
move faster. Catch him. I just shot a man. He's back there. Did you know him? I never saw him until he popped up behind me. He said he worked for Mr. M. I guess I was excited. That's why I didn't stop. You were lucky this time. I made a mistake saying I didn't need police protection. I'll ride with Weatherby. You radio Blair to have guards sent out to Weatherby's house. We'll make it so tough Mr. M won't be able to get within miles of you. Hello, Jerry. Did you get the generator? Yes, but the police got track. Where are they holding him? Donna's just trying to find out. Probably at the city jail. And he's liable to do some talking if we don't get him out, Anthony. We'll take care of Shrek. How? Don't forget, we have a detective lieutenant completely under our control. Kirby Walsh. Right. And as long as he has infantry in his system, he'll obey our orders. That chemical you picked up in Africa certainly has its uses. Combined with the electronic ear, it makes Walsh the perfect robot. I'll call him on the microwave beam. Has this bag been out of your sight since you got it from Donager? No. I don't understand. What's that? For Anthony Walden. The Kittridge generator is in my hands. All suspicion has been removed from Cornelia Walden's attorney, Weatherby. I will use him in getting Schrack out of jail. Give Kirby Walsh orders to notify Schrack. Further instructions later, mysterious Mr. M. Mr. M must be a ghost. Maybe. But he wasn't so clever this time. Clever enough to take the generator from under our noses. He made a mistake in sending that note in his own handwriting. I have the writing compared with everyone we know. The man's uncanny. He knew what we would try to do. The smartest people make mistakes. We made one in letting him find out what we were doing. The time will come when he'll make one. In the meantime, do we have to do as he says? We'd be foolish not to. The fortune involved in the Kittridge submarine engine. Archer, call Kirby Walsh in the microwave beam. Kirby Walsh, this is your master speaking. Talk to Shrek in his cell at the first opportunity. Tell him you will help him to escape that he is to refuse to talk, that M will arrange for Weatherby to assist him. I'll repeat that. Tell Shrek he will be helped to escape by you and Weatherby. Grant Farrell or Captain Blair, please. This is Farrell speaking. This is Weatherby. I've received a death threat from the mysterious Mr. M. Oh, my phone? No, a note. It burst into flames after I'd read it. Was well, Shrack mentioned in it? Yes, I'm to wait here until Shrack is brought to me. If that isn't done by midnight, M said I would die. Are the police guards still around your house? I think so. Well, more men will be sent out. Just obey M's orders, and rest assured nothing will happen to you. What do you make of that, Grant? Evidently some kind of a plan to free Shrack. I don't know how this record got into my office, Captain, but it's from the mysterious Mr. M. Captain Blair, this is a very important record. Play it immediately. The mysterious Mr. M. An innocent man will die unless your prisoner, Shrek, is brought to Weatherby's house before midnight. In spite of the lawyer's refusal to represent Shrek, I shall see that he does. Weatherby has been warned, refused to obey these instructions, and find Weatherby dead, the mysterious Mr. M. That's bluff, pure and simple. I don't know. The threats he's made previously have been carried out. You mean you're going to take Shrek to Weatherby's? Under heavy guard. Then if Mr. M makes his play, we'll be in a position to trump his lead. I'll phone Weatherby that you and Kirby are going to take Shrek to his place right away.
The other guards arrived, Ropey? Yes, sir. I can't imagine how nervous and upset I've been since receiving M's threat. What can he hope to accomplish by bringing Shrek here? His release. You're not worried, are you, boys? With all the guards posted around, M will never dare to come here. The police will tell you they haven't been able to stop him yet. This time we will. I doubt it. You got a match? Here's a light. Oh. Don't move, Shrek. Watch him, Kirby. Grant. Dart from that cigarette lighter hit him in the neck. I'll phone for an ambulance. How is he, Grant? That's hard to tell. He doesn't seem any worse than when he was first hit with a dart. Someone must have switched this lighter with one Weatherby hat. You can't blame that on me. All right, get him up, Farrell. You too, watch. Climb on the stretcher, Shrek. They're gonna pass us through the police, Kirby. You're staying here, Farrell. Turn around. Weatherby, just tell the guards to stop anybody they see on the place. Right. Nice work, Kirby. I'll get back in there to Farrell and see that he doesn't follow me. Okay. Kirby, call out ambulance! Stay where you are, Grant. Kirby, what's the matter with you? Nothing. Take another step, I'll let you have it. Another session on the Kittredge matter. I suppose everybody's demanding action. Yes, they're all on pins and needles since they learned the true value of the doctor's invention. Well, a submarine engine that enables underwater travel with bigger and faster ships in the present day surface craft is something you get excited about. It's too bad Kittredge's anxiety for secrecy let him distribute the various parts to different manufacturers. So, yes, Miss Buckby. Captain Blair phoned long distance while you were out, Mr. Henry. Something important? He suspects an attempt is being made to rescue one of the mysterious Mr. M's men whom the police are holding. Shrek? How's M expect to do it? The Waldron attorney, Mr. Weatherby, is being used as a go-between. But Grant Farrell is turning the situation into a trap for Mr. M at the Weatherby home. You can't imagine how nervous and upset I've been since receiving M's threat. What can he hope to accomplish by bringing Shrek here? His release. You're not worried, are you, boys? 
With all the guards posted around, they will never dare to come here. The police will tell you they haven't been able to stop him yet. This time we will. I doubt it. You got a match? Here's a light. No! Don't move, Shrek. Watch him, Kirby. What happened to him, Grant? Dark from that cigarette lighter. Hit him in the neck. I'll phone for an ambulance. Any word from Dungeon Shrek? Not yet. I'm afraid we took a long chance that Kirby Walsh, even under the influence of hypnotrain, would be able to carry out the plan. How is he, Grant? That's hard to tell. He doesn't seem any worse than when he was first hit with a dart. Someone must have switched this ladder with one Weatherby had. You can't blame that on me. All right, get him up, Farrell. You too, Walsh. Climb on the stretcher, Shrek. Passes through the police, Kirby. You're staying here, Farrell. Turn around. Nice work, Kirby. I'll get back in there to Farrell and see that he doesn't follow me. Okay. Where you are, Grant. Take it easy, Grant. Bullet wounds oh. can be mighty serious. Yes, this one was. For the cigarette lighter. I can't understand what possessed Lieutenant Walsh to fire a shot at... Kirby, you. where is he? He beat it in the car. I'll put out a general alarm. No, wait. You get Weatherby to a hospital. I'll take care of Kirby. I have a theory about him concerning the mysterious Mr. M. Right. Yes? Speaking. This is Shrek. The whole deal came off without any trouble. And Walsh was a big help. We made it look good, so he's still in the clear with the police. Good. Shrek says Walsh is okay with the police. I'll contact him. Very convenient contacting Kirby Walsh for the electronic ear we adapted from Dr. Kittridge's invention. Police would never think of looking for a radio receiver small enough to be concealed in the human ear. Kirby Walsh. Kirby Walsh. You did an excellent job in the handling of the Weatherby affair. Now you will forget everything you have done. Act completely normal. Go about your duties. I repeat, be perfectly natural so that there will be no suspicion of you by the police or Grant Farrell. While the dart from the cigarette lighter was poisoned, the doctors got to Weatherby in time with an effective antidote. I'm still pretty much confused about what happened at Weatherby's house, Grant. No more so than I am. Beyond me, why Kirby Walsh would want to kill you? Oh, he must have mistaken Grant for one of M's men. If that was so, he would have reported in by now. Grant, you, you can't believe Kirby deliberately shot at you. There's no doubt about it. He did. You don't mean he's working for M. Why not let me send out a general alarm for Kirby? If Kirby is connected in any way with Mr. M, it's better we keep our suspicions to ourselves for the time being. So M won't get wind of him? Yes. We'll have to depend on the special detail. They'll find Kirby before long. doing here in Grant's apartment? Waiting for you. For me? Why? After what happened at Weatherby's, you shouldn't have to ask. What are you talking about? Stalling won't do you any good. What is this, a gag? Is that what you call trying to kill Grant Farrell? You two mugs are out of your heads. Maybe, but you're going down to headquarters with it. You're not going to put any cuffs on me. Pretty 
can't be hurt. His head hit the desk. We'll get him to the hospital. Grant could question him there. Okay. What did the tests of Kirby's blood show? Same chemical was found in his blood that was present in the sample that you sent me, Grant. Is there any possibility it could be a hypnotic? In view of your description of Kirby's actions, I should say it was very possible. Then he could have been acting under M's control. Yes. It was necessary to make x-rays of the skull fracture. The pictures revealed a small object that had been surgically inserted into Kirby's ear. Did you remove it? I have it here. Eardrum. Electronic ear. I wonder if there's any connection. With what? Well, it's a wild guess, Shirley. But this reminds me of the electronic ear that was stolen from Parker. The blind inventor that was doing work for Dr. Kittridge. Yes. Parker might be able to help us. Well, this looks like an exact duplicate and miniature of the electronic ear we built for Dr. Kittridge. Then there can be only one answer. Only one. The electronic ear serves as a radio receiving set. And anyone speaking over a microphone could be heard by Kirby no matter where he was, but no one else could hear a thing. Provided a microwave beam was used in broadcasting. Grant, that's how Kirby must have gotten his instructions from Mr. M. Under the circumstances, there's no doubt that's so. Is there any way we could hear someone broadcast over this miniature? We have an amplifier that'll make it sound like an ordinary radio. Could I borrow it? Certainly. Smith will get it for you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Parker. Now we'll give the newspapers a story that will encourage a broadcast from this mysterious Mr. M. Break promised in mysterious Mr. M case. Lieutenant Kirby Walsh, when interviewed today, promised new and interesting developments in the baffling case. We should know about those developments, Anthony. We will. Walsh declined further particulars, but admitted he and Grant Farrell had uncovered a lead that would stop M's activities. That could be something to do with the Kittridge submarine engine. And anything Kirby Walsh knows, we'll know. Calling Kirby Walsh. Calling Kirby Walsh. Listen carefully. Contact me as soon as you are alone on a radio wavelength of 12 meters. Change your police car radio to operate on this wavelength. I have some important questions I want answered. Remember, contact me as soon as you are unobserved. Do not fail in this. That is all. Your newspaper story certainly did the trick, Grant. There's no doubt now. M figures he has Kirby in his power. I wish we could have had Kirby here. He might have recognized the voice. Well, in that case, he'd have to obey. As it is, he'll do what we want, our way. You should have set a definite time for Walsh to call. That'll be too dangerous. He must be free to broadcast when he's alone. Well, that means we'll be stuck here until we hear from him. It means you will be. I have some important business to attend to. There you are. When you throw that switch, we're on the air. You tell me when. I can say this, Grant, but you're putting yourself in an awful spot. That's the only way I can figure to catch up with them. But why do I have to be out of the running at a time like this? Look, you've done plenty. You've already been closer to him than any of us. Yeah, if I can only remember. And trying to trap him, I may find out what happened to you firsthand. Let's get on with the broadcast. You ready? Kirby Walsh calling. Kirby Walsh calling. Over. Go ahead, Walsh. Give me the information you have. We've located a model of a motor block for Dr. Kittredge's submarine mansion. Where is it? Being shipped by truck to a government warehouse unescorted to avoid suspicion that it's valuable. What route is the truck taking? Highway 6 to County Road Fork, then south. The truck will leave the city here at 2 o'clock sharp. OK, thanks. I hope that gets results. Well, if I'm going to be a stand-in for a motor block, I'd better get moving. <laughs> Good luck, Grant. There goes a great guy. I won't argue with you about that. Hello, Shrek. This is Derek Lamont. There's an important job to be done. I'll meet you and Donager in 15 minutes. That's right. Anthony's orders.
Grandma. Marina and I have had the most delightful drive, Derek. We're going to do it more often, darling. It's good for you. Uh, but now I think you'd better lie down and rest. Mm, I'll lie down in here. It's quieter in your own room. I'll be in in a minute to see that you're comfortable. How is she? Fine. The hypnotrine injections make her docile as a lamb. She obeys orders like a child. Her obedience makes it very convenient for us. Derek, you aren't here to talk about Grandma. What's on your mind? Marina, you and I have taken all we're going to take from Anthony Waldron. You know something I don't. What is it? A chance for us to sit in the driver's seat instead of Anthony. But you'll never get away with double-crossing Anthony. He knows nothing about it. Maybe not. But what about the real Mr. M, the unknown person who controls even Anthony? I'm not worried about him. In a few hours, I'll be taking off from the Canyon Airport with a model of Kittredge's submarine engine. Derek, if you get that, then you can really dictate terms. When Anthony asks about me, you haven't seen me. Fine. The truck should pass here within an hour. As soon as you've taken over, drive to the Canyon Airport. I'll be waiting for you there. Right. I wonder if he's Mr. M. I'd sure like to know. We've been working a long time without getting a look at that mysterious Mr. M. I left Derek with definite instructions to stay in the laboratory. Where is he? I don't know. See who that is. Hello. It's Mr. M. Yes? Anthony Baldwin, the mysterious Mr. M, has learned Derek is double-crossing you. His sister can give you all the details. Make certain she does. So Derek is double-crossing me, and you know all about it? No, I don't know anything. Where is he? What's he up to? Answer me. All right, all right. He's after a part of the Kittredge submarine engine on Highway 6. He's going to the Canyon Airport. Climb down. It's in the truck. Let's go. Now, if you feel like calling the police, there's a telephone back there about 10 miles. Get those signs off the road. Come on. I'll take track with me. You get rid of the truck. Okay. Hey, someone's coming. It's Mr. M. Oh, so that's the big shot. Wait here. Sure, a load off my mind to see you. It is. M Marina must have told you where to find me. She did. I thought for once we'd get away with something without Mr. M finding out. There wasn't time to tell you, so I figured I'd fly the model of the engine block to a safe place and, and tell you about it later. It's already aboard the plane in the large box. You did just right. Not giving him a chance to make a move was smart work. But I'll fly the box to a safe place. You take the car back to town. Sure, sure, Anthony. I'll be glad to. Mr. M, this is Bill Schrack, and I'm Donninger. We're sure glad to finally meet up with you. Which one of you is coming with me? I am. to thank you yet, Mr. M, for springing me from the police. As long as you prove valuable to me, you'll be taken care of. 
imagine me sitting here talking to the mysterious Mr. M. Say, I bet there's not a half a dozen people know what you look like. Your health will be better, Shrek, if you can forget what I look like. And also where I'm taking that box. You can count on me. I think you'd be wise to take that box to the nearest municipal airport, Mr. M. By the way, turn around. I'd like to see what you look like. It's Grant Farrell. Alias, the model of Dr. Kittredge's motor block. Thanks for bringing me here. better if Grant hadn't insisted on working alone this time. The success of his plan depends entirely on the mysterious Mr. M having a clear field. Police follow-up might have been discovered. What if M discovers that instead of hijacking the model of Kittredge's submarine engine, as he was led to believe, he has Grant Farrell in that box? So far, Grant's foolhardy plan to be taken right into Mr. M's headquarters seems to be working. But I'd give a half a year's pay to know where that box is right now. I haven't had a chance to thank you yet, Mr. M, for springing me from the police. As long as you'll prove valuable to me, you'll be taken care of. Imagine me sitting here talking to the mysterious Mr. M. Say, I bet there's not a half a dozen people know what you look like. Your help would be better, Shrek, if you can forget what I look like. And also where I'm taking that box. Well, you can count on me. I think you'd be wise to take that box to the nearest municipal airport, Mr. M. By the way, turn around. I'd like to see what you look like. It's Grant Farrell. Alias, the model of Dr. Kittredge's motor block. Thanks for bringing me here.
So you're sure that you convinced Anthony Waldron that you weren't trying to double-cross him? Do you think I'd be here if I didn't have him fooled? I told him I was trying to keep the real Mr. Rem from getting the model of the Kittredge submarine engine. I hope you're right. Look, Marina, playing along with Anthony is the only way we can get the upper hand. Well, that signal means he's back and wants to see you. I'll go right down. What is Archer doing with the microwave transmitter? Taking it apart. When any useful equipment ceases to, uh, shall we say, operate my best interests, I usually have it removed. Do you mean the police are wise to our control over Kirby Walsh? Not only that, but they used the micro receiver you had surgically inserted into his eardrum to bait a trap. And you, my friend, would undoubtedly be in police custody right now if I hadn't taken over. Believe me, Anthony, I had no idea it was a trap. No, of course you didn't. You were acting only in my best interest, weren't you? You don't believe it. You think I was trying to double-cross you. Oh, now, why would you do that? We stand a chance of making a fortune once we get all the parts and plans for Kittredge's engine, which will make possible fast-moving submarines as large as ocean liners. That's right. We've got to stick together, Derek, in order to outwit the unknown Mr. M. I'm with you to the end, if we can only catch up with him. Very sincere expression of loyalty, Derek. Which I don't believe. I would have eliminated Derek permanently if I didn't have the alternative of injecting artificial obedience into him by means of hypnotrine. Put him on the surgical table. Mr. Skinner. Glad to know you. Thanks. Mr. Skinner was sent to me from the patent office. We did some work for a certain party who was dropped out of sight. Uh, I was trying to locate him. That's why I came to Washington and inquired at the patent office. There. Did you uh, bring the picture? Yes. Show it to Mr. Skinner. Yeah, this is the man, all right. We knew him as Jack Nichols. Dr. Kittredge was more secretive than most inventors. Well, he knew the value of his submarine engine. In order to protect it, he used assumed names in arranging to have the different parts developed. I'm convinced from what you already told me, Mr. Castleton, that my partner and I were working on a part of his engine. What part? A manifold gas converter which purifies the carbon monoxide coming out of a gasoline engine's exhaust. Where's the converter? Well, my partner, Brandon, has it in our shop back home. Should be turned over to Grant Farrell immediately. He's our special agent handling the Kittredge case. I'll tell Brandon on the phone right away. Well, impress on your partner that he must use extreme caution so there'll be no interference from the mysterious Mr. M. This is the mysterious Mr. M. Martin Brandon is registered at the commercial hotel. He has with him a gas converter that makes servicing of underwater vessels unnecessary. Get this device immediately. Lose no time as Brandon intends contacting Grant Farrell. This record came in a box of orchids for Grandma. Mr. M, as he calls himself, must be feeling in a good mood. And why shouldn't he? He stands to win a fortune with us doing all the work and taking all the chances. We're in this too deep to quit now, even if we could. We can't. He knows too much. Then you'd better do as you've been ordered. I'll telephone Shrack and Dogger to take care of Brandon at the commercial hotel. Blair's office? Yes. Winthrop speaking. Grant Farrell, please. Who is this? Martin Brandon. Oh, yes, Mr. Brandon. Mr. Farrell's on his way over to the hotel. He should be there any minute. Oh. All right. I'll wait for him. Thank you. How do you do? Hello. Mr. Farrell? 
Well, yes, I'm Farrell. This is Mr. Dorgan, the man working with me. How do you do? Uh, you're Mr. Brandon, eh? That's right. It's too bad I didn't get you when I called Captain Blair's office. I could have saved you a trip out here. What do you mean? Well, I was a little nervous about that mysterious Mr. M. I had an express man pick up the gas converter. I sent it to your apartment. Excuse me. Let that phone ring. Why? Because I tell you to. Stand by that phone. Oh, uh, give me the number. I'll call you back in a few minutes. Uh huh. Shrack ran into trouble at the hotel. Did he get the gas converter? No, but he found out it was being shipped by express to Grant Farrell's apartment. Oh, that's a bad break. Well, Farrell doesn't know about it yet, so it won't be too difficult to get. With the help of Hypnotrain, we can use Derek to keep Farrell away from his place. Bring Derek in here, Archer. Carefully, Derek. From now on, you will work with the police. You want to help them. You understand? I understand. I want to help the police. You have information they should know about. But you're afraid of the mysterious Mr. M. He'll kill you. I'm afraid the mysterious Mr. M will kill me. You will call Grant Farrell at police headquarters. And a search of Brandon's room revealed nothing. Then I checked with the hotel people, and nothing of Brandon's was found in the luggage room. Well, maybe Brandon didn't have the converter with him. Oh, when I talked with Skinner, he said definitely Brandon took it with him. So the mysterious Mr. M put another one over on us. No, I don't think so. Shrack certainly went out of that room empty-handed. Sullivan just called in, Grant. There's been no trace of Shrack. Well, if they haven't caught him yet, he slipped through the net. Might as well call off the boys. Kirby! Well, how are you feeling? Good as a fiddle. Do you remember anything that happened before that chemical was injected by Mr. M? No, I wish I did. Somebody would pay for a lot of things. <sighs> Captain Blair's office. Just a minute. It's for you, Grant. Farrell speaking. This is Derek Lamont. Yes, Mr. Lamont? Could I see you immediately? It's very important. Well, of course. Come on over to headquarters. That would be too risky. Frankly, I'm afraid for my life. Why? What's happened? I'll explain when I see you. I have some information that may lead to Mr. M. Where are you? I'm in a phone booth at Fifth and Lake. I'll pick you up in my car in a few minutes. Anything interesting, Grant? I don't know. It looks as though it might be. I'm going with you. OK, Kirby. You stay here and hold down the office with Winthrop, Shirley. Let's get out of there fast. Okay. You think we can drive around until we make sure we're not being followed? Keep a lookout behind, Kirby. Right. That leaves us a clear field of Farrell's apartment. Yeah. We'll get over there right away. What's this all about, Derek? Did you ever hear of a Professor Dranga? No, I can't say that I have. Well, he and Dr. Kittredge worked together. Dranga was doing some research in connection with artificial means of adapting the human system to withstand great pressures. What do you mean by that? What artificial means? With chemicals. Well, that's very interesting. All of them's victims died from the effects of chemicals. Yeah, and Dr. Kittredge was among them. Did this Dranga know anything about Kittredge's submarine engine? He may have. He dropped out of sight about a month before the doctor was murdered. I never saw him again until today. Why didn't you mention him before? Well, 
Well, to tell the truth, I forgot all about him. When I saw him again today, I, I remembered his association with Dr. Kittredge, and I thought that he possibly could be Mr. M. Where did you see him? Going into an old deserted house in the suburbs. He took some packages in and came out later without them. It's worth following up, Grant. How do we get to this old house? You go out through Littlefield. This is it. Kirby, you stay out here and cover for us while we go inside and investigate. Right, you better take this with you. Tonga went down through here. We've got it, now let's get out of here. Wait a minute, I gotta call Anthony first. Hello? Yes. Good work, Donager. Take the package to your place and hold it till I call you. Everything's working out just as we planned. Donager and Shrack have the converter. What about Derek? He was picked up by Grant Farrell and Kirby Walsh. They should arrive at the deserted house any minute now. Ten o'clock, Derek will pay his debt for having double-crossed me. Grant Farrell and Kirby Walsh will be out of our way for good. Doesn't look like this place has been used in years. There's something hidden down here if we can only find it. Here's a place where the dust has been disturbed. Let's see. You're right. No dust in the valve handle either. Try it. See what happens. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Hold the light, I'll get the box. Is it heavy? Yeah, pretty heavy. What's that? The village clock striking ten. Yeah, so it is. Well, let's see what's in the box. Special messenger. Donager and Shrack have the model of the manifold converter for the Kittredge submarine engine. Fine. What about Mr. Lamont? Derek's under the influence of hypnotrine. For once, completely reliable. He met Grant Farrell as scheduled. Did Farrell swallow the bait, Mr. Waldron? Donager saw him drive off with Derek. They ought to be at the deserted house by this time. And Grant Farrell should be permanently removed from the case of the mysterious Mr. M. Doesn't look like this place has been used in years. There's something hidden down here if we can only find it. Here's a place where the dust has been disturbed. Let's see. You're right. No dust in the valve handle either. Try it. See what happens. Oh, we're getting somewhere. 
Hold the light. I'll get the box. Trying to get rid of me proves that he ties in with Mr. M. Well, not if Mr. M set the trap for both of you. But Derek knew about Kittredge's submarine engine and all about the trouble we've had trying to locate the manufacturers for it. Where could he have learned about it except from M? Talking about Derek Lamont? He was connected with the mysterious Mr. M, all right. The autopsy shows traces of the same unknown chemical found in the others. That's what I've been waiting to hear. Come on, Kirby. We're going to visit his sister and Grandma Waldron. Anthony, something's wrong. What do you mean? Kirby Walsh and Grant Farrell are in talking to Grandma, and they asked me to step out. Farrell? Well, what's so surprising about him being here at this late date? Nothing, but I thought he was looking for Mr. M in another direction. Where's Derek? Oh, I don't know. I thought you did. I thought I did, too. Maybe I'm wrong. You go back and join Grandma, whether Farrell and Walsh like it or not. We've got to know what's happening. Not as bad as it looks, Miss Lamont. We had some unpleasant news to tell Mrs. Waldron, and she fainted. She's got a cut on her forehead. What happened? She cut her head when she fell. What did you tell her? I'm sorry we had to tell her, and I'm even sorry that we have to tell you, Miss Lamont. It's about your brother. Derek, what's happened? Mr. Ann. We thought it best to hold back the news from the papers until we had a talk with you, and until we were sure that Mr. Lamont was one of M's victims. How can you be sure? The unidentified chemical. We hope, of course, that one of you ladies can give us some information. Grandma can't help you, and oh, I wish I could help you, but I don't know anything. We'll question you later. Right now, I'll have to ask you to let us examine your brother's room. I have a search warrant. Show them the room, Marina. We'll do everything we can to help. Everything. Thank you, Mrs. Waldron. If you'll follow me, please. The more I look at it, the more I'm certain it's some sort of code. It must be, coming from a secret pocket in Derek's coat. How did you ever think of such a hiding place, Grace? That's a good question, Shirley. I'd like to know, too. Kirby and I searched Derek's room and found nothing, but one of his coats in the closet had a rip in it. You examined the rip, found the secret pocket, and then looked for a pocket like it in the coat on his body. And found it. Thorium, what's that? That's a radioactive element, so rare that very few chemical companies would handle it. There's a lead for us. Find out which company filled this order. Well, that shouldn't be too hard. Just find the company that issued this invoice. By finding a duplicate of the invoice number. Let me do that. You've got yourself a job, Shirley. Hi, right, Shirley, what's your hurry? Out of my way, Kirby. I have work to do. The lab says this list of chemicals doesn't make sense. Which confirms my opinion. I think it's some sort of code. Could be at that. Using the symbols of the chemical elements. Yes, the lab has certainly helped us by putting all those symbols beneath the names of the elements listed. Here's where I come in handy. Our department has a code expert now, thanks to war service. I'll let him take a crack at this. Hey, what about my handkerchief? The lab can test the blood stains on it, but they said it was a delicate job and it would take time. Well, we can wait that long to find out if Mrs. Waldron has any of the unknown chemical in her. That's what I told them. But I wish Marina Lamont had fainted, too. And hit her head? So do I. That's what you've been waiting for, huh? Yes. Everything now depends on how much Marina suspects about Derek. you because I had to take care of Grandma. She's almost as upset as I am. Derek's dead. Dead? The police had an autopsy. 
They found hypnotrine in him. As I gave it to him at his request, I won't deny that. But I didn't know he was dead. I'm sorry. You sorry. Anybody who'd give his own grandmother a deadly hypnotic like that African concoction of yours doesn't know what the word sorry means. I didn't give it to her till I knew the dosage was safe. And if she talks, you'll go to prison as well as I. She isn't a relative of mine. And as for you, Anthony, the police think you're dead. Well, I'm going to make their mistake a fact because you sacrificed my brother trying to get Grant Fell. You fool. Ask Archer if I just lied. He's downstairs. Why did Derek decide to let you give him hypnotrine? Derek felt he could trick Farrell better without giving himself away. With Farrell gone, we'd have a better chance of finding the man who really had us all under his power and is preventing us from getting the Kittredge invention. I'll handle this for you. See who that is. Sure, Mr. Anthony. If she asks you about it, that's all you say. Her brother wanted me to give it to him. I didn't order any hats. Is it yours? Ours. It's a model of the manifold converter for Dr. Kittredge's submarine engine. Shrek's in it. It's a funny-looking converter. Shall we listen to it? There's nothing else we can do. She is all right. Police headquarters. Come in, headquarters. Some code expert I've got. I didn't know he was that good. Your idea was sure right. This is the first real lead we've had to the mysterious Mr. M. Sure, Kirby, but what does it mean? Key and niche back of panel. But what key and what niche? Yes? Miss Clinton wants to speak to Mr. Farrell on the radio. Hello, Shirley. This is Grant. Go ahead. I'm being followed. Okay, sister, get started and keep driving. Where to? Straight ahead. I'll tell you when to turn. Uh-oh, I don't like what I'm hearing. Neither do I. Smart girl keeping the mic open. Let me see that bag. Kittredge, 7412 River Street. That's where we're going, sister. Keep in contact with me by radio, Kirby. I'm going to 7412 River Street. Right. Sit down there. Don't try anything funny. 
Hey, what's so important about this joint? I don't know, but we're going to give it a good going over. What are we looking for, anyway? I don't know. Maybe she can tell us. I don't know any more about it than you do. If she knows anything, we can sweat it out of her. Uh-oh, we got visitors. in here. Let him find it for us. Shirley, what happened? Two of Em's men saw you coming. They, they ran away. Here, let me help you. No, I, I'm all right. Is this uh, Dr. Kettridge's lab? Well, this is the address the Emerson Company gave me. Well, then that must be the panel. Panel? What are you talking about? Those chemical symbols we found on Derek were a code, all right. The message was key and niche back of panel. Well, here's the niche, and here's the key. I'll take that key, Farrell. Thanks for saving us the trouble of finding it. development in the mysterious Mr. M case. Confidential? For the commissioner only. Grant Farrell and Shirley Clinton are investigating a waterfront laboratory believed to be Kittredge's. They are following a lead that may identify the mysterious Mr. M for us, as well as recover the plans to Kittredge's submarine engine. Hello. Blair speaking, Bureau of Homicide. What? Kittredge's waterfront laboratory is on fire. Kirby Walsh is on his way down there now.
glad to see you and Shirley. Oh, the feeling's mutual. What about that key? Oh, we got it. I'll tell you about it later. Must be pretty important. Them's men tried hard enough to get it. Well, look at it. There's a name stamped on it. Yeah. Go ahead, Shrek. I'm listening. Okay, but bad news. They got Donagers. Well, was that key? Tough. Really tough. Are they safe? They're on their way now to the Hall of Justice with Kirby Walsh. You know, there's nothing we can do about that. I'll get in touch when I want you. Marina was listening in upstairs. She still doesn't trust me. So, Donage's dead and that key's with Phil. Nice going, Anthony. Thanks for eavesdropping. Look, let's get things straight between us. I know you're responsible for my brother's death. I could tell the police that you're Anthony Waldron, whom they think dead. But I need you, and you need me. That's part of the price we have to pay for the kind of things we're doing. Fair enough, Marina. How's my grandmother? The shock of Derek's death, plus the cut she got on her head, keeps her in bed. Just as well. She's old. With a head in the train in it, it might react. Incidentally, Farrell dabbed the wound with his handkerchief. Is it possible for a chemist to analyze a small spot of blood like that? Yes, I would give them a direct lead here. They have to leave here in a hurry. Grandma will have to help us. Get her up. But Mrs. Waldron, I'll have to sacrifice them to get you the money as quickly as you wanted. That's what I said, Mr. Weatherby. I want you to sell all my holdings. All. I want everything in cash as soon as possible. Now, don't worry, Grandma. Everything's going to be all right. You just go in and go to bed and go to sleep. Then I can have the assignment? Good. Thanks, boss. I'm to go to Woodstock right away. There's a claim to be examined. Insurance investigators can be useful, can't they? If that key Grant got opens a safety deposit box in Woodstock. You're it. Oh, hello, Kirby. It's Woodstock, all right. Third National Bank. The box is in the name of a Mrs. Carter, but the bank said that her husband had taken it out and they'd never seen the lady. Kittredge hiding his tracks again. Having the bank's name stamped on that key made it easy for us this time. My insurance company wants me to investigate a claim there, so why should anyone suspect me of checking on that key? Nobody should. That's why we're going to let you do it. And you're going with her, Kirby. We can get to Woodstock before the bank closes if we fly. That's a good idea. We'll charter a plane and you can fly it. Well, Grandma did what you wanted. She'll be a pauper tomorrow. We should have made a cash in sooner. We'd have got more. Don't worry. There'll be plenty. We'll need all we can get. This was left in the secret passage to the garage. And the hidden signal was used to attract me. There's always someone cleverer than you, Anthony. You invented the make-believe Mr. M to mislead the police. And now this man uses the same thing to fool us. Well, let's listen to it. Anthony Waldron and Marina Lamont. Accessories after the fact for the murder of Dr. Kittredge. Why? Because an engine invented by Kittredge is able to run when submarines are underwater, permitting such craft to be built as large as ocean liners. This is your last chance to get the Kittredge's master plan for that engine. Go to Woodstock. Hello. Yes, this is Blair. Yes. From Woodstock, you say? We've been expecting the call. Kirby is there, so we don't have to worry now. All okay, Kirby? Shirley was right about that small can of film she found in the safety deposit box. It's microfilm. It looks to me as if it's Dr. Kittredge's long-lost master plan. We're phoning from the airport, and we'll be taking off any minute. What about the weather there? Well, there's fog, but it won't stop me. Fog or no fog, I'm certainly glad you're my pilot. This is one move the mysterious Mr. M can't possibly anticipate. You hope. Well, let's get going. We'll be in communication with Grant all the way. Gee, 
Kirby, with all this fog, I don't see how you can tell where you're going. I can't even see the wingtip now. There's a gadget does my seeing for me. As long as we're on the beam, we can't fly anywhere but home. With the automatic pilot on, I can go to sleep and we'll still get there. Hmm, you just try and go to sleep. 107, chartered, calling control. I should have called long before now. Grant's probably having fits worrying about us. 107, chartered, calling control. You can take it easy now, Mr. Farrell. Here they are. Come in, control. Control room to 107, standing by. On course, beam control. Tell Mr. Farrell to sit down. Over. Mr. Farrell wants to tell you to sit down yourself. He doesn't think he'd better till you get here. Over. I'll call back every 10 minutes. I don't want Mr. Farrell to blow up from worry. Signing off. I'm not at all flattered by your attention or Grant's worry. All you want is a microfilm. What else? I want that microfilm, too. One advantage of a chartered plane is the fact there are no people on board to make things difficult. I'll take that microfilm, Miss Clinton. I wouldn't try to follow me if I were you, Miss Clinton. Happy landing. Zero 07, calling special flight 107. No luck. 15 minutes late. Kirby might keep me waiting five minutes for a rib, but not this long. 107, calling control. Come in, control. Come in, control. Over. Control standing by. Come in, 107. May I speak to Grant Farrell, please? Hello, Shirley. This is Grant. What's the matter? Over. There was a man hiding in the plane. He shot Kirby, took the microfilm, and bailed out. I tried to bring Kirby, too, but he's still unconscious. Now I'm, I'm off the beam in the fog, and I don't know how to fly a plane. Try to figure out her position. Are you an automatic pilot? Yes. Kirby said so before he reported to you. Well, you'll have to be the pilot now. Just imagine I'm sitting beside you and do exactly as I tell you. Look at the compass. What does it read? 132. Airspeed? 205. What's your altitude? 7,000 feet. That's too low, Shirley. Climb to 12,000. But first, switch off the automatic pilot. If she bucks a little, don't let it scare you. All right, I'll try. First, the automatic pilot. Right near San Gregorio Mountain. Maximum elevation, 11,402. Listen, Shirley. When the plane levels off, make a right turn until your compass reads 312. After you've made the turn, start climbing. Twelve thousand five hundred level off and fly as you are, and your beam tone becomes a steady hum, and that's the way home. Hello, Shirley. Is everything all right? I'm all right now. I'm at twelve thousand two hundred. Wait a minute. The beam tone's changing. I'm back on the beam, Grant. Make a left turn and stay right on the tone. That fog out there is just like soup. Fog on the ground here, Shirley, but don't get panicky. I'm going out on the field. Guide you in.
Hello, Shirley. You're doing swell. I can hear your motors. The full throttle back let reach 160. Start losing altitude. As soon as the beam cuts off, you'll be right over the field. Just cut off. We'll make a left back and imagine you're circling the spot where the beam cut off as you come down. Now pull down the landing gear. It's to the left of the co pilot seat. gears down. Ease the throttle back to 100 miles an hour. Don't go below that. I can see your lights now. Level off. Right at us, Shirley. Pull back on the wheel just a little. Please off on the throttle till you feel her begin to settle. Pull the throttle back just a little more. Not too steep. You're too far to the left, Shirley. Pull up! Kirby's life as well as yours. Now pick the same runway and come in a little bit to the right of it. straight. Fine, Shirley, fine. You're doing great. Look out for those wires, Shirley! influential people. On the Kittredge matter? Yes, but one or two of them are still doubtful that the engine Dr. Kittredge invented will make it possible to build submarines as large as ocean liners. It's a fact, Rutledge, whether they believe it or not. Look at this wire I got from Captain Blair. 
Master plan for Kittredge submarine engine located in Woodstock. Lieutenant Walsh and Shirley Clinton flying it to me. Farrell meeting them at airport. Terminal airport flight control, Carson speaking. Oh, yes. Yes, Captain Blair. Any news yet? Bad news, sir. A stowaway on Kirby Walsh's plane shot Walsh and stole Dr. Kittery's master plans for the submarine engine. What about the insurance investigator, Shirley Clinton? She's trying to bring the plane in, sir. Can she fly? Well, she's never flown a plane before, but grass down on the field using a radio to direct her in. You're coming right at us, Shirley. Pull back on the wheel just a little. Please off on the throttle till you feel her begin to settle. Pull the throttle back just a little more. Shirley, fine. You're doing great. Okay, Shirley. Level off. Look out for those wires, Shirley! Pull up! hospital with Kirby. Did you get a good look at the man who shot him? Yes, but his face was partly covered by dark glasses, so I'd have a hard time identifying him. Well, that's tough luck. But it must have been him, all right. And now he's got Kittredge's plan. I don't like to commit myself, but I have a hunch about that man, and I'd like to follow it up. Well, go to it. My car's in the parking lot. Take it. All right, thanks. Very much to my amazement, Mrs. Waldron, when I attempted to dispose of your securities, I discovered the police had placed a restraining order against their sale. Well, securities are mine to do with as I please, aren't they, Mr. Weatherby? Oh, of course, it's only a technicality. There'll be no trouble having it removed. Why did the police do that? Uh, from what little information I gathered, it was because of your brother Derek's death and his apparent connection with the mysterious Mr. M. I don't understand this situation at all, Mr. Weatherby. Well, frankly, I don't myself, and I'll inquire into it the first thing in the morning. You remind me so much of your father. He always got me out of difficulties. <laughs> don't worry, I will too. <laughs> I'll show him out, Marina. I'm going to bed. All right, Grandma. Uh, good night, Miss Lamont. Good night. Good night, Mr. Weatherby. Good night, Mrs. Waldron. Archer, has Anthony come in yet? Well, tell him to come upstairs the moment he returns. Something important's developed concerning Grant Farrell and the police. Thanks, Doc. I needed that. How long have I been out, Grant? Long enough to keep from knowing about the most exciting airplane ride you'll ever have. Surely okay? Yeah, she's fine. Right now, she's trying to identify the man in the plane. His face was partially hidden, but she's following up a hunch about him. Did you see him? No, not good enough. Things happen too fast. I'd like to nab that gent. He's M if I'm any judge. You can still help, Kirby, if you're willing to take a risk. How? As you know, the hypnotic chemical that M injected into your bloodstream was unknown to our chemists. That's one reason M was able to use it so successfully. From the sample we took from your blood, we've arrived at the formula for the chemical and have been able to develop an experimental antidote. Well, what are we waiting for? You now, the chemists haven't had time to check it yet. Well, so what? <laughs> Why can't I be a guinea pig? If the antidote doesn't do what we hope, it could mean death. Of course, we can put this off. We can put it off till we hear from Shirley. Her hunch may give us the lead we need. I'll talk to Grant, and then I'll take the chance. I know I'm disturbing you by calling at this hour, Mrs. Walden. Nonsense. Even though I'm tired, I can't sleep. It's 
strange thoughts go through my head. Weird thoughts. We always lock the door. We're frightened alone here at night. Well, it's wise to take precautions. Grandma, Shirley said she had something important to tell you. What is it, Shirley? I have a picture here I'd like you to identify. Well, why have you put adhesive tape across the eyes? I'll tell you in a moment. But can you identify that man? Of course. It's a picture of my grandson, Anthony. But he's been dead a great many years. He's not dead, Mrs. Waldron. What? I saw him earlier tonight, but he had dark glasses on. Are you sure that it was Anthony you saw? Well, not until Mrs. Waldron identified him just now. I had a hunch he wasn't dead, as everyone thought. But if he isn't dead, I... Thank you, Marie. I hate to tell you this, Mrs. Waldron, but I, I feel I should. Anthony Waldron is a mysterious Mr. M. Oh, mercy me. I'm sure now it was Anthony who shot Kirby Walsh earlier this evening and stole the master plans for the submarine engine, which we had recovered. Does Grant Farrell know that Anthony's Mr. M? No, nobody does but us. As soon as I was sure my hunch was right, I came right over to see that nothing happened to you or Mrs. Waldron. Anthony wouldn't harm his own grandmother. He's already tried to have you killed, Mrs. Waldron. So he has. And he's also responsible for the death of your brother, Derek, Marina. What can we do? I want you both to come to police headquarters with me. You'll be safe there. Yes, yes, we must go at once. No, we aren't going, Grandma. Are you sure you understood me? Certainly. Well, then why do you refuse to go to headquarters where you'll be safe? Because that's the very place I won't be safe. So I'll arrange for the police to find Anthony here, really dead this time, with enough evidence against him to prove that he's Mr. M. What are you talking about? It all works in with my plans. No one knows you're here. So when they find you, along with Anthony, no suspicion will rest on me. You see, Shirley, I'm the mysterious Mr. M. made a mistake. I'm not Anthony. Anthony Waldron is dead. You have not seen him. You will not remember anything that has happened. When the police question you, you were sleeping. You heard nothing. You will be very much surprised to learn that Marina is dead. I was asleep. I heard nothing. You will not remember that Miss Clinton was here. You will forget all that she has told you. Understand? I understand. You are tired. You will now go to sleep. I'm tired. Now, young lady, you will be just as cooperative as Grandma Waldron. Oh, no, I won't. We'll see. The person who called himself the real Mr. Reb won't bother us anymore, Archer. Who was it? Marina. With Shrek, I think, playing voice for her on those records. Shrek won't bother us anymore, either. I've taken care of him. You caused me considerable trouble, Miss Clinton. I hope I can cause you some more. You can't. I've been prepared for just such an emergency. The submarine is waiting to take me out of the country. Get the hip between, Archer. After this, you'll never be able to help Grant Farrell anymore. Are you sure you feel no bad effects from the antidote, Kirby? None at all. How far had I gotten? Grandma Waldron's room. Oh, yes. Marina was in there when I got in the room. But you had heard men's voices. Yes. As I was looking for a secret entrance to the room, Derry came through a hidden opening in the wall. 
we fought, and then some other man that I didn't see hit me over the head. That's all I remember. And later? When I came to, I was in a laboratory. And after they released me, I found out that it was under the Waldron house. Hello? Captain Blair? Yes. We're beginning to get places, Grant. That specimen of blood you obtained from Mrs. Waldron has the same chemical in it we found in all of M's victims. There's no doubt, then, she's being kept under its hypnotic influence. Yes, and as we have the antidote... Which works and is harmless, judging by Kirby. Better and better. Incidentally, Shrack has been fished out of the river. An M tag on him. Well, that's one less we'll have to deal with. I have another lead to the Waldrons from Kirby to confirm the one about Mrs. Waldron. I'm leaving for there right now. Can you go with me, Doctor? No, but Dr. Walker can. She's excellent and knows about the antidote. Fine. Will you get her for me? I wish me luck. You got it. And now, Miss Clinton, you will go back to Farrell and Captain Blair. You'll remember nothing of what has happened. You'll tell them your hunch was wrong, that you could not identify the man in the plane. Do you understand? I understand, and I shall obey. I won't bring her out of it till I put her on the street. Watch her. I'm going up and check my grandmother again, just to be sure. I've given Mrs. Walden the antidote. She should be able to answer your question soon now. Her condition otherwise is good. Thank you, Dr. Walker. When you think she's able, bring her in here. I'll have the body removed in the meantime. Now, what's the matter? Farrell's up there with an antidote for hitting the train. He knows my grandmother's under the influence and he's bringing her out of it. In that case, the quicker we get on that submarine, the safer we'll be. No, no. Because Farrell would know I'm alive. The way I'm going to do it, the police have no reason to change their minds about me. How can you do that now? By conditioning Miss Clinton differently, that's all. Miss Clinton. Yes, Mr. M. That time mechanism we had installed for emergency, set it for midnight. Are you going to sacrifice your grandmother along with the rest of them? Anybody that gets in my way. Clinton, when I take you out of here, you'll come back through the front entrance. And so, that's all I know about this terrible business. Of all people, you deserve no such sorrow, Mrs. Walden. But it'll soon be finished now. I don't think Mrs. Walden should see anyone just yet. No, of course not, Doctor. And there's no reason why you can't put her to bed now. Thank you, Mrs. Walden. Shirley, I didn't expect to see you here. My hunch was a dead, so I checked with Captain Blair. He said you were here. I was just curious, that's all. You being curious has nothing on me. Do you want to help? I was hoping you'd say that. Doing what? Looking for a secret entrance to an underground room. table door for that secret switch, Grant, but I'm certainly helped this time, aren't I? You certainly are, Shirley. I wonder who he is. One of M's men, who discovered too late that only fools trust criminals. Uh, I won't hurt to look this place over. I'll start over there. Sorry, Shirley, but you're not responsible for what you're doing. You've got that hypnotic chemical in you. I don't know. I do. Mrs. Waldron told me you were here earlier and all about Marina. I just wanted to find out what Anthony had arranged. 
Now you're going upstairs and get the antidote and tell me where I can find that not so mysterious Mr. M. Look, isn't it time we submerged? When the captain gives us the word, sir, we shall. But where is this captain? Every time I say anything to you, you refer to him. Yet he hasn't shown himself. As always, Anthony Waldron, your captain is the mysterious Mr. M. You can give me that microfilm of Kittredge's master plan now. Although Marina was my confederate, I expected that you would eliminate her for me. Keep him covered. I know you're not tricking me because you're here with this film. But you fool, it's blank. Farrell has the microfilm of the plans. There's a submarine, thanks to you remembering. Courtesy of the police chemistry man who discovered an antidote for Anthony's chemical. Well, he'll never use it again. sent the microfilm by mail and took the phony with him on the plane, just in case. We have the plans. You two and Miss Clinton have served your country just as well in peace as you did in war. Thanks, and congratulations. Thank you, sir. Washington, very complimentary for us all. Huh, Washington should be. And now that I'm going to be alone in this big house, I was wondering if Shirley'd come here with you. You know, Mrs. Walden, you'd better consult Grant about that. I think you're right, Kirby. Will you come here with us? After your honeymoon. You know, after all, there is a housing shortage. <laughs> <laughs>